FHLB, but it's not, they were always borrowing from the FHLB. Um, you know, three years ago, they were borrowing from the FHLB. And so, in fact, three years ago, they were actually, as a percentage of equity, First, First Republic was more borrowing more from the Federal Home Loan Board than, than it was after, um, after the pandemic. So, yeah, First Republic, I'm not saying... A great bag, but I would, you know, and, and, the, and the powers that be have, have stepped in and they've kind of saved it um, because I think they sense it is an okay bank. I think the, I think the bank to really keep your eye on, um, I, I would keep my eye on Schwab. But isn't Schwab just a stock market brokerage? Are they actually doing no, other banking it's not. too? It's the seventh biggest bank in the U.S. And you can look it up. It's got an FDIC, FDIC certification number, 57450. I mean, it is a bona fide bank. It, I mean, it is a brokerage too, but it's definitely got banking because they sweep brokerage account deposits. They sweep them into bank accounts. Schwab, in other words, when Schwab Bank lends you money, it's not getting that money from a vault. It's click, click, clicking that money into existence on a spreadsheet, just like real banks do, because Schwab is a real bank. And, he, and the thing that the, the red flag with Schwab is, you know, three years ago, even, even a quarter or two ago, they didn't have any loans from the FHLB. And all of a sudden, um, in the, I think it was the third quarter of 2022, they went from zero to $10 billion in loans from the FHLB. That, to me, that's a, that's a huge red flag. Um, and that, that, you know, it's funny that in the wake of the, of the, crisis here, the two bank crisis so far, nobody's really talked about the FHLB, which to me is like, you know, this is a layup. Just go look at the graphs and you can see FHLB lending in the OA crisis, it predated even the repo borrowing, the panic borrowing in the repo market, which is for sure a canary in the coal mine. Um, so FHLB lending is a real thing and, and it, it's going on at Schwab. It's going on in First Republic too, but like I say, it's, it, First Republic has been a long time customer of FHLB. There's nothing, there's no sign of panic in the water at, at First Republic the way there is at Schwab. Um, and this is residential real estate for the FHLB that you're talking about. This is not the commercial U.S. commercial real estate, which I think is probably the larger short-term crisis that's coming over the next three, six, nine, 12 months. I, I think that's probably right, but I'm looking at the FHLB from the point of view of I'm a bank, um, maybe I'm in trouble and I need, I need some money. Um, so I'm going to go borrow it. All right. So five minutes and a hand comes on. It's a little early, but that's what you get with a guy that gets up at 5 a.m. to play pickleball and then buys donuts on the way home, he's got energy. Me? I don't have that much energy this morning. It's rainy, but I'm excited for Kristen to be on. She's terrific. She is terrific. Uh, um, oh, let me move this. It's making something happen. So we don't have many people watching, but um, maybe once Ham comes on, since he's the popular one, I'm sure that, I'm sure that all sounds mighty cozy, but I don't find you men all that popular. No, I don't find you men all that appealing. I don't find you men all that appealing. All right, GTII is uh, is uh, 26, 5, 460,000 shares. 
nobody's selling. And that's what is so frustrating. It's one thing that you make a bad investment or whatever, but the it's another when the criminality is right in your face and Gary Gensler doesn't care about it. It's just unbelievable. I didn't have time to print that one thing out. Um, vocals bit is up. It's up 0.0002. At 0 0.0047. So I guess Jeremy was right. This is the key to turning the company around. Wolf is up nine cents to 215. Uh, I don't know why I have Northwest Bio here. That's 66 cents. HNRC is up. Slightly more than uh, vocal. It's up 0 0.0003 at 0 0.037. HNRA, that, that's to me, I, I just can't see anything wrong with that. I guess it's just in the wrong industry. 191, can't see why that's not a 5X. Um Finger is 336, same thing as GTII. They just keep they keep driving it down. Uh, ZJYL, I tried to buy some this morning. I I I don't know something about e trade, but that's 99.99. Are you out of your mind? Uh, GDC uh, 260. And finally, LGIQ is what I have on my uh, 6.95, so basically seven cents and unchanged. And Ham will be calling in in two minutes. Look, Bitcoin is above uh, 47,000, but how many are you going to buy? You're going to buy one coin. That's one side. On the other side, Morty. Um, it might make companies like uh, Wolf uh, attractive. Attractive. Yeah, Jeffries, of course, Michelle. Um, I, my, this ear is ringing, so my voice is going up. Let me try to get my voice down. Serenity now, serenity now. But Michelle, the uh, the um, uh, uh criminals have everything under control and of course jeffries and all of these companies are at highs also as you know the the market in the last two months of the year added 20 trillion worldwide to the market i think the stock market's headed much higher um I don't want to contradict any doom and gloomers, but I think I think you're going to see new all-time highs, massive uplift in the stock market this year. Um, why? I, I think why is because there's liquidity. All right. Luckily, you don't have to listen to me anymore. All right, Pam, I got it. I'm just I'm going to merge you in. Let me get her. All right, Kristen Shaughnessy, you guys are in. First. You guys are in for a treat. You oh, guys oh, are God. in for a treat. All right, let me. I have to call you back. I gotta get up first. All right, relax, everyone. Call ended. Relax, everyone. Relax, everyone. Everyone gets so uptight. Uh, let me see what Morty said. Yes, sir. I figured it out midstream. That's that's thinking. See, you're starting. I know you do it already, but a lot of you guys are starting to think the way you have to. Uh, when you when you hear, for example, it, it, Boeing. I, all right, we'll talk oh, about it later. Man. Hello. All right, I think I have a hold on. 
Hello, is everybody here? I'm here. I'm here. Okay, great, everybody. All right, welcome uh, again. Uh, just let me ramble a few seconds before uh, everyone starts talking. Uh, I just want to let everybody know again that fraud is out of control. It's super aggressive. And I think it's because I think there is pressure coming down. And I think the SEC is going to, something is coming out because this is so blatant. I, I can't get another phone call. I've, I've had 50 already today saying it's so blatant, and obvious what's going on. And it, it just for example, I just, I haven't touched on this in a while, but in GTII, there's a market maker, ASCM. They are complete criminals. This is their back to the bottom of the barrel again. They used to use Puma, ASCM, VERT. We're back to the penny criminals here that are just vultures. And they're on the stocks now. So this is going back to old school again. So this is not a major player. These are the criminals that the, they're bringing in all the lowest, the lowest forms of life to sell shares and just add more weight to the stocks. In GTI, for example, I was explaining to William before, if the stock is 27 bids, someone sells 10,000 at 27. The guy who buys it at 27 turns around and sells it at 26.50. She loses a half a penny. He marks the stock down. A half a penny, William, on 10,000 shares is what? A lot of money. Bucks. No, so it's what? It's the... half a penny. It's it's fifty dollars, right? So they lose fifty dollars in the trade. They mark the stock down, and the gentleman that buys it at twenty six fifty is the same people. He turns around, sells it at twenty six, so he loses fifty bucks. Until a buyer steps in, they keep doing this cha cha. That's what I used to call the Kramer cha cha. It's a wash trade, and they're, they're marking it lower. That's all they're doing. And we can't stop it. The SEC knows this goes on. FINRA knows it. The NASDAQ goes on. Everyone knows this is going on. Why they don't stop it, I don't know. But it's so blatant that everyone can see it. And you know what? It will stop. And when it does stop, it turns, and that's when it goes. I can't stop it. No one here can stop it. On a different note, I, I pointed out the NVIDIA trading. This morning, NVIDIA did a big run up. The shorts on the opening came in and knocked it straight down to 516. It turned and it ran back up to 526. Those are signs of shorts in trouble. They knock it down fast and then come scooping it back up again. And you can see it's down again on the day. They'll try it again. They, they do it in waves. This way they get investors to sell their positions. Finger motion is, has a wave. It's been a tidal wave for us, but they're just selling, 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 selling. And eventually they're going to turn and they're going to come back and scoop up people who, who want to bail out. That's how shorts do it. I've seen it done. I, I, I bought stock. I didn't manipulate it down, but I, I would run in, buy a stock, take it up a dollar real fast let it fall back down, come back and scoop it up, go back down and scoop it up. And that's how you can accumulate millions of shares of stock. That's if people are selling. If no one's selling, which I don't see the selling in GTII, and I don't see the selling in Finger Motion. Yesterday, the reported short was 77%. Every 10 shares that was traded, almost eight shares was fake. How could any company survive that? The U.S. The U.S. couldn't survive if people were doing that to the dollar bills. All right, that's why counterfeiting is illegal, because the weight of the counterfeits destroys everything. Anyway, everyone, welcome. I have Kristen here. I have William here. And William, why don't you? you I'll let you be the host of this uh, this show. Well, and let's go. I, I I would I think Kristen would do a better job. She's the uh, the internationally famous news broadcaster but it's so exciting Kristen to have you here um thank you for joining it is nice to join you I, I always enjoy listening to you guys and I'm sure I speak for the entire community when I say I learn a lot from you uh this is sort of how I got into that that battle by getting educated about what was happening um I actually had started looking after my mom passed for 
companies that were looking for a cure for multiple myeloma, which is what she passed from. And I found two companies, they were very small companies. And I was like, why hasn't anybody heard about them? They're doing such great work. And then I couldn't understand why the price was pennies based on what they were doing. And so then eventually I got hooked up with you and with him and you educated me on it and told me why it was happening. And you pointed out all the, all the intricacies of the market. And then I also have been following Arca Bulls, learning a lot about technical analysis from him and you put it all together. And, you know, it's funny that you always say, William, because it was a group of former colleagues and I who always say, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then you have to decide, do you stick your head in the sand or do you decide to get up and fight? And we've all chosen to fight. That's, I, I thank you. Well, That's exactly right. That becomes a matter of conscience, doesn't it? And, and it certainly does. Well, I, I, I feel awful about your mom, but I, have, I told you I shared the same story with my mom. Mm-hmm. She had breast cancer at 62, she passed, and I was doing anything, desperately trying to find something. And I found IMMU, which was now acquired by GILD, and the short sellers attacked this company. And Adam Fraunstein was writing re- fake reports about it, just like we see in Finger Motion with Capybara. It's the same thing. It's not like it's new. There's only a few things they can do. They needed to write the story to knock the stock down so that they can cover their fraudulent positions because they knew the data was very good. And the stock eventually went from $2 to $88 and acquired by GILD. Now, I don't know what happened to the stocks that you were following. I'm sure they disappeared by now or basically shut down anything, any hope of anybody surviving. They, it just, it's just awful. Yeah, one has definitely been, uh, there's been reverse splits and dilution. The other one, though, the CEO is very aware, fighting. They got $450 million in funding for a SPAC deal, and I think you're going to hear big things from them in the future. That's ENZC, which you'll see me put up the SIG. What's the symbol? What's the symbol? ENZC. Um, Eddie, Nancy, Zebra, Charlie. Eddie, Nancy, Zebra, Charlie. It's two cents. It's two cents. Yeah, it is it Enzo something? Enzo? It's Enzolytics. E N Z O L. God, there yeah. used to be a company, Enzo Bio, uh, Bios, yeah. that, that was, was huge. Uh, it was ENZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. This is a company that has created a, a NASDAQ stock through a SPAC deal. And then when the SPAC deal recently, they're reconfiguring it now because. I did some digging, me and other members of the community, and it turned out it was toxic lenders who had gotten in there. And well, Ham will explain lenders. what happened. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I, but in, in the in the SPAC world, the toxic lenders fund the SPAC. Okay. Mm-hmm. They they always seem to be pricing of a ten bucks. They put up the money. And then they hire management to go out and find a deal to put into the SPAC. All right. So you understand that. So they have the money first and they look to acquire a business. If they don't acquire a business, the money is returned. So let's say the SPAC opens at 10. The story goes around that they're going to acquire this company or that company. All the rumors circulate. People start buying it. It goes to 11, 12 dollars. The lenders short all they can and then they when the company uh, the officials of the company say we found a deal the lenders say "Nah, we don't like that one because they have they have the right to refuse it and what they say after time is say hey you know what give me my money back i don't like this idea anymore so now these guys are short the stock at twelve dollars they pull back their money all right and the things go to zero so it's a perfect crime, and the SEC allowed it to go on, and all the facts were destroyed the same way. It's, you know what? It's interesting to to watch all of this, and, and disgusting, too. It's frustrating. But also, people are waking up. Don't you all feel like that? I feel we saw that article I posted from the UK, um, Member of Parliament. Uh, I was going to ask Mr. you Parliament. about that. Talk about that after you make your point, please. Yeah, no, she... 
this was a woman who wrote, it was in the end of December and she wrote a letter and it looked like it didn't get any views and it was sort of hidden. And then I was reading through it and what she says makes such perfect sense. And basically she's saying predatory short selling should be caused for global concern. And she talks about pensions being hit hard and also retail investors. She understands what's happening or she sees what's happening. I don't know if she knows exactly the intricacies of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And that, there you go. That was a great find. And I, I, I keep trying to tell everyone every morning I wake up when I see you post something, I get fired up. I get ready to go again. <laughs> uh, listen, I've been doing this 24 years, the ups, the downs, and every day seems to be an up day for me. I feel super positive. Okay. And the only negative I have is the manipulation that I have to watch in the stocks that we follow. There's so many stocks that are being manipulated. And I, and I just wanted to give you guys a, a quick lesson. Jeffries and company came out with their earnings. They were down 53%. The stock has been, its stock was actually up today. I don't know about you, but a stock that's down 53% their revenues and it's not going down. You tell me what's going on. It's basically a ring around the brokerage firms because they protect themselves. Finger motions, the revenues are up 60, 70%. I forgot the number. And the stock has been down 70% in the same period. And it was less than, you know, since October 10th, straight down from seven down to 350. So you tell me what world we're living in. It's the bizarro world. It's insane. Jeffrey's stock should be down cut in half, not, not be unchanged on the day. But they protect the brokerage community They make sure if you're Jeffries and company, someone's naked shorting your stock. You think they're allowing it? Go back and look at Lehman when it was wiped out. The CEO of Lehman was screaming that they're naked shorting his stock and he wanted them to stop. And no one protected him and they wiped him out. Right. They did it to Bass Stearns and they did it, did it to Lehman. That's actual proof for those companies uh, were getting destroyed by naked short sellers. Obviously, because they didn't, they did something wrong to the cartel, and they got they paid the price. That's what happened to those companies. So, Kirsten, do you know Jennifer? I do know Jennifer. Yeah, she's asking who's Jennifer. on who's on oh. the phone now. <laughs> Maybe you can <laughs> oh, tell her. Yeah. Hi, it's Kirsten Shaughnessy. I've been uh, following these stocks as everyone else has been, and and kind of learning as we go but um i do feel like we're making some progress right because we're now seeing other countries do take action the financial regulators watching them in south korea i realized the fines weren't that great there but the fact that they referred two banks to prosecutors was promising and they're investigating 10 global investment banks in total and then india they had already banned uh counterfeit shares but they put new restrictions in place which I posted something else this morning where you can tell that it's making institutions there nervous because they said this could facilitate short, short squeezes. squeezes. And she is all over Twitter. For anyone who doesn't know, you can find her on Twitter. So you're going to be on, that. you're going to be on Newsmax or something, or you're having a, uh, you're having a space call tomorrow or both. This is, yeah, I got it. I got a message um, from Maria Nawal who does, uh, financial, he does a lot of space calls, but this one is a finance program at eight o'clock in the morning. And he asked if I would be a regular contributor, which I said, I would be happy to do that. Um, we were supposed to do one today. It had to be canceled at the last minute. So we're going to resume that tomorrow. And, I and it'll, be be on, it'll be the space calls on Twitter, correct? Yes. Yeah. If you look at the bubbles up on top, it will come up around eight o'clock and it usually the finance one, I think runs around an hour. And then uh, I'll be there Thursday as well. Should well, you should can't people, anything more than that, William? <laughs> should people go to your Twitter uh, handle or? Oh, that's a good question. I could probably share the link too. I, I'll have to remember to do that. If not, if you just go right above where they, you'll see those uh, those bubbles, okay. and they show you who's and look for Mario. Uh, now oh, Mario. And, okay, and it's yeah. eight a.m. It's 8 a.m. and he has um, his producers said 10 million listeners weekly, so it's big audience. So and there you go. The more eyeballs there. we get on this, yeah. We're getting there. Listen, I just had a, a, a text message to me. The biggest holders in finger 
and GTII, William, have offered the money for us to fly to South Korea, including the holder. We will go into, we'll, we will be going to South Korea shortly, and we will teach the people in South Korea never to fall for any of the U.S. bullshit when they call them up. Don't fall for any of their tricks. This is a devastating crime that destroys and undermines all the economies, and we will make sure they know every query detail about this crime. And I just wanted to let you know that we were, we just got funded. We got about probably 50 grand that we can spend. Of course, you'll be in coach and you'll come up and see me in first class. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be going shortly. I just have I'm to not going to sit next to the window door, the door <laughs> window. <laughs> we're going to duct tape you to the door. Anyway, uh, we will be going. Uh, I just had to take care of some uh, medical things and then we'll be out of here. So we will be going. I will teach them how they make it short to drive stocks down and abuse people who buy stocks on margin. I, I told everyone about the other day about my friend who purchased a million shares of stock for his clients. The stock was nine. I, I can't remember. I think it was VUZI uh, at a Rochester. I spoke with them a while ago. The stock was nine. They were pushing it down. He called up every day to Yvonne Eubler at the head of NASDAQ. He spoke with her every day about naked short selling. They were pushing the stock down. And as a broker, clients bought stock on margin. If the stock goes down, the client needs to put up more money on margin. How many days in a row, William, if you were the client and I called you up and said, William, you got to put up 2000 3,000, 2,000, 5,000 before you say, William, what would, what would you say at one point? What are you going to say? Well, you, what you say is unprintable. You get <laughs> angry at me and you, you don't send any money. You know, it's a seller. And, then, and you say sell it. And that's the way to create another death spiral in a stock. It's a little trick. I try not to teach you all the little gory details because I, it's too much for most people to understand. But they manipulate the stocks down. People who buy it on margin sell it out because the broker has to call. The broker, he told me he was calling 40 people a day, putting more money to get more. He goes, I couldn't do anything else but call clients up, help them calm them down, and then ask them for more money every day. <laughs> After they were all sold out, the people on margin, the stock turned and ran to $26. After they all got wiped out. And that's what they do. And I can see that's the pattern in finger motion or part of the pattern. They're trying to get people who did buy stock on margin to dump it, keep it below a certain price so people don't have access to buy it. Could they be trying to do the Merrill Lynch move, which is keep it below a certain market cap and a certain price? Anyone in the Merrill Lynch system would have to liquidate it because it doesn't meet Merrill Lynch's guidelines. And I'll post that up for everyone to see it. It was an old CNBC story about Merrill Lynch had a new rule for small caps. So Merrill Lynch actually helps the short sellers by telling everyone they can't hold these positions at Merrill Lynch. And for those who don't understand, I'm sure both of you don't, Merrill Lynch clears for a lot of firms. So anyone in the Merrill Lynch clearing system would have to liquidate these positions because they're not allowed to hold them. And if you had your account at Merrill Lynch, you're going to say, oh, Sell my finger stock. Uh, you know, I'm just going to stay at Merrill Lynch. I'm not going to open up a new account and transfer it out. Most people are lazy, won't do that. And you dump your position. That's another trick. All right. So, again, there's many things here that the people in South Korea are going to get an earful on. And we're going to show them how we're going to create a venture exchange, which is going to be a buy and sell only. And we're going to solicit uh, countries all around the globe to go list in this exchange. And if you look at Susan Trimbath, she said, the, if you want to trade in the equity markets, get your U.S. passport and open an account in South Korea. It's the safest place to do it. She's telling you, not me. She tell, she's telling you, and she worked at the Depository Trust. So she knows everything about the crime. And you had said that a few weeks ago. And then when I saw her tweet, I was like, again, just more eyes on this and understanding is really going to help. When you look at MMTLP, when they put out those numbers from TradeStation, that TradeStation had 122, 622 shares. 
allocated to them certificates, but then the shareholders themselves are at 246,000 and counting. Right. So when people see those numbers, you understand what's happening. It's way oversold and it shouldn't be, and nobody's giving any answers, but they're going to have to at some point. Well, let me just give you a little tidbit about that. TTI did that. Okay. They tried to count the shares. And I believe only 30% or 35% of the investors sent in their positions to the company so they can count them. And I do believe that Ameritrade, okay, don't, I can't remember the names. I think Ameritrade had a discrepancy of two to three million shares, but only 30% of the people sending in their <laughs> positions. Remember, this is the most important thing. Investors do not band together. We are lazy. They don't do things. All right. So what MMTLP is doing is the correct way to do it. Find a small company and expose it. Shareholders do not work together. We are lazy. All right. If everyone sent in their statements and showed their holdings, you would get these discrepancies, but people just don't do it. And that's how the shorts win. And if you look at it, if you've been following me for a while, I always put a photo up of the Roman army. They work together. When they work together, they won. When they, when they fought by themselves, they were slaughtered. That's what the shorts are trying to do, break everyone apart so they can slaughter us. And MMTLP is showing you that working together, they'll get it done. Now, I can't hold everyone's hands in GTII and finger. I know it's financially devastating that the stocks go down. But that's what they're trying to do, break us apart. They run in and they try to slaughter us and people start running because they're violent and everybody runs away. That's what they're doing. It's the same pattern. I hope I, Pam, I have a question for you. Um, just you've been in it, obviously, for 24 years. What's the difference now compared to what it was when you first started out, aside from social media being such a huge platform for you? That is the most that is the most important thing that's happened. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was the raging bull. There were five investors fighting and 500 crooks. If you think you're in a fight now, <laughs> you should have sit there swinging back then. I felt like I was in the uh, Lord of the Rings fighting the, the, the demons with this one sword, fighting 500 of them at a time. But we fought through it. We protested in Times Square. We went to the SEC. The SEC hated us for what we were doing back then. I mean, hated us. I can't remember one guy's name was James Brigliatano. We went to an SEC conference. Pat Burr, John Tobacco was there. That's when I first met him. And Tom Ronk was there. Mark Mark Falk was there. That was in 2004. That's when he wrote the story about terrorism in the financial markets. That's how far back this was. And we screamed at this guy, called him a fraud. He got off the stage when he did his speech and he went out the side door and he left. He wouldn't answer a question. We were attacking him. I can, you know, there were 10 of us, 12 of us. I drove down with two people I met coming out of the subway at the protest that I had in Times Square. They made their own signs. I mean, I'm still friendly with them. I mean, it's just insane. That's what we fought with back then. Today, people are ready to do anything to fight back. And you can see it in the MMTLP crowd. They're, they're, they've been, you know, they gone to D.C., they've done everything possible. You know, they, they helped us move along. Just when you think you run out of gas, you know, Anna came up, Busy Brands, Mark Bazile jumped into the fight. I didn't know Mark Bazile. John Berder I knew from Torchlight 100 years ago. I couldn't believe he was still involved when I found out about this MMTLP. That he, and he said he wasn't involved. I mean, I, I learned the story from him directly right to my face. I couldn't believe it. But again, it's completely different. People are uniting together, and you have to keep pushing. If you don't own a stock, I don't care if you own it or not. It's it's devastating if you're upside down, all right? Everything my family has is invested in these stocks, and I can't go away, all right? But I understand it, but you can at least retweet, tell someone, stay away from the equity markets, protect yourself. That's all I ever ask anybody to do. And it'll get, it'll keep getting stronger and we will end this thing. And these guys are going to jail. I promise you, I've educated the Secret Service. The FBI told me themselves they own MMTLP and Finger Motion as investors. They listen to these calls. I'm not lying about that. Mark Bazile introduced me to the FBI. 
They listen to the calls. They've, I've educated them all. They listen to what everything we say. It's coming. The SEC, they all say the same thing. We do not give out fines. We lock them up. And that's what the same thing uh, 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 an investor who- You meant the, the FBI. FBI. You meant the FBI. Yeah, the FBI. Yeah. They told me a long time ago, the guy looked at me. I told you I was with the gentleman. I told him I received death threats. He looked at me in the face and he was a nasty MF. He looked at me, he says, we're going to lock him up. Do you care? I said, nope, <laughs> I couldn't care less. You know, and, and uh, I just had a text message from a guy who was a market maker and he used to naked short and he can't believe it's still going on. He's retired and he wasn't as aggressive as we see in these days, but they did it in uh, you know, they were allowed to do it. He did it within the guidelines. Sure, he did. Well, they had uptick. <laughs> they had upticks back then. Well, they still make it short. And he told me, and I've had him on the call before, and he was hiding his voice because he's pretty well known on the street. And he's an investor in Finger Motion. And uh, after he yelled at me the other day because the stock was going down, I went right back at him and I said, "Hey, would you like? Can I give your number to the FBI and Secret Service?" And that was the end of him. He shut up then because then he knows that we're right. Anyone who runs away from speaking to the Secret Service and the FBI, I can get you their numbers. You can sit down with them and cry all you want. Once I say that, no one wants to show up. I wonder why. So again, that's you gotta remember that people are afraid of their past, like my buddy is, but he's willing to help us out. He owns the stock, he's been helping out. He knows Kathy Woods. He knows a lot of good people, and he's been helping out. But his concern is that we can't stop this. And I'm telling him, don't be concerned. We will stop it. And that's the opposite. So, Kristen, yes. do you would it be interesting to hear your story of your newsroom story and what happened and how you had to fight back? Or is that yes, uh, too boring to ask you? I'd love to hear it. I would have to say I'm not able to speak about it oh <laughs> um, so yeah hopefully at some point i will be able to but right now i cannot so <laughs> but i appreciate you asking about it it is it's pretty well documented though so so there's that but you know as you were talking i was thinking of you know mmtlp what they're doing getting this open letter for congress i don't understand why every member of congress why this is not a no-brainer to sign it especially in an election year um, so I think money we sh we should be targeting not just members of Congress but also state representatives because if you can get your local media to understand the story, all stories start locally. And so if you can build sort of a groundswell from the bottom up, as Ham and William have been doing, you can really reach the masses that way, and they can then put pressure on their congressional representatives and. What's the excuse for not signing that letter? There's absolutely none. Issue a subpoena and demand the fair count. It's so simple. But politically, for some who are, I would say, morally corrupt, it's hard. <laughs> or they're bought or they don't, you know, they don't want to yes. look. Um, what do you think we should do to be more effective with media or or getting the message out? I mean, it, it's hard to break through. Me, I don't know what you think of media now, but to me, there aren't really any journalists anymore. It's hard to get this story out on media. Do you have any suggestions, outlet, news, uh, newspaper? I don't know. I don't even know where to begin. And I think uh, it's educating them. They have to be able to get the story past their editors, right? To, right. to be allowed to either print or report the story. It also takes time to learn what's happening, to see all the nuances of what's happening. So you need someone who's a good investigative reporter. And there are many, but you have to find the ones that you trust and who will put in the work. There's a lot of good independent journalists. And if you target those, even if you, there's somebody in your local paper or a local television station, they're like, they want to break a story. This is the one that you want to tell the story to. And I'm sure, you know, William, you and Ham would reach out to anybody, to any reporter, if somebody got them on the phone and said, hey, can you talk to this person, explain it. Um, and then they have well, to get it through, me, through their own. Let me just stop you there for a second. The new consultant for GTII, mm -hmm. who I was instructed to reach out to, I have as a woman from Bloomberg that's go, we're going after toxic lenders and making short selling. So that's as great. soon as the, she understands the first two terms, <laughs> naked short selling and toxic lenders, 
I think it'll be an easy push, but she's ready to go. So I'm just waiting for the uh, contact. I also think there's such a good audience on Twitter because local news has changed as well, right? Not too many families sit down and watch the five, six and 11 o'clock news anymore. It's just changed. The whole landscape has changed. So Twitter is so immediate that that helps. YouTube helps. Um, I actually started putting stuff on LinkedIn and have gotten a pretty good response. The one about South Korea got a couple thousand impressions and it was the first one I did. I was just like, let me try it, see if there's interest here. And it's, it's gaining some momentum there too. So it's just, it's the more you tell the story, the more people cannot look away. And what you keep doing is like repeating the facts and that helps people understand it because the repetition, you know, increases uh, the understanding. So I, I would say that's, that's good. And all these Twitter spaces that people do, members of Congress, I think you have to hound them. Uh, and I think it, I think on Twitter it has to be like, why target members who haven't signed the open letter and also ask them why not and i would maybe print their names you know these are the ones who haven't signed and and kind of publicly shame them because there's no reason they shouldn't be demanding a share count in mntlp which i'm not even in but it's it's just to watch it is what's happened for more than a year is ridiculous a they can't issue a subpoena and b they haven't even signed their name and these investors have been held up for more than a year makes no sense so, Kristen, uh, Ham and I always thank the same people. Are there any names of people you've worked with in MMTLP or on Twitter that you want to call out that pop to your head and just say their name? Well, Anna and I have had a lot of conversations, so I really appreciate the work she's doing. Um, Jenny L is this quiet force behind the scenes, as you know, William. Yep. Busy brands and, and savvy. Um, there's so many. Dozier, who I always look to for his numbers there's i'm afraid i'm going to leave somebody out right so ace does his uh his youtubes everybody is contributing in all these different ways 100 he's got great information on there very detailed you have to really look at what he's putting in there and sit down and read it and and try to understand it and also that video that they just put out um patrick uh and crucial mix on twitter that it's an 18 minute movie, I'm breaking it down into like shorter segments because sometimes people's attention span is 18 minutes long, as we all know. So that is, they did an excellent job with that. Thank you. I I, I always leave people out. That's why I put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm going to leave. So sorry if I did, everyone. Um, well, I just want to let you know, William, I yeah. spoke with her, I don't know, a year and a half ago, maybe. I can yeah. remember two years ago, I yeah. called her up. She yeah. had a question. I reached out. We spoke, and she's the, one of the quickest learners in the world. I've been talking to William for years, and he's still trying to figure out what's going on. You learn less than a year and a half everything. So, if we, as they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. We're trying to keep get William back into the game here. He's a, don't take that, William. Don't take that. <laughs> well, I got I got blocked on Twitter for the second time because I had I guess I had put up a picture of. Sam Chung at, uh, uh, if I said her name correctly, at Lynn Partners, and she reported it that I was violating a copyright. So they blocked. So anyway, I got out of the habit. I'll get back into it. Um, there yeah, was nothing on her website that said that was a copyrighted photo when I, when I, you know, downloaded it, but whatever. That's why I got out of the habit. We need you back on there. I should also mention Mark, Mark Bazile. He's been he's been yeah. great at this fight and really guiding investors because I do think there are some nefarious people in that MMTLP community who disguise themselves as being for the community. I think you have to be very careful who you're listening to. So do you have a full understanding of what's going on with MMTLP? And maybe you want to talk about one or two things that are going on, or is that putting you on the spot? Well, I can try. I mean, I think you guys probably understand it better than I do. But from, you know, this was a special dividend that wasn't supposed to trade. So that question to me is who allowed it to trade and why won't they tell you who allowed it to trade? It feels like somebody very powerful is being protected here. And that's why it's taken more than a year to, well, we still haven't gotten any answers, right? So investors' money is tied up. The problem is they didn't realize that, as you said, Ham, people would 
you know, come together and fight. They thought they could sweep this under the rug and it might go away. But as you've told everyone, all trades have to be settled eventually. And now that we're seeing the numbers in here of potential counterfeit shares in the hundreds of millions, they've got a huge problem. It's been described as a crime scene in process that's a frozen and it's right there for anybody who wants to actually take a look under the hood. Uh, again, I just received a text message from the the people producing the movie for Thank us. You. The producers of Gaming Wall Street offered a co-production deal. We're sorting out details. So this small little project has now turned into it's gaining uh getting uh action from i guess the producers of gaming wall street which was i guess a big production i think it's on netflix i think that was i'm not even sure where that was uh the gaming of wall street i, I don't remember them that was the gamestop uh production so our little thing with has thing emotion gtii mmtlp and things that we wanted to cover no more gamestop amc again just so you guys understand i'm not being nasty then but you have a stock that goes from three and three quarters to 500 and you lost money or, or amc from two to 70 those are life-changing events we haven't had that yet in finger motion and gtii or mmtlp we're still waiting that's the difference they had those events and wall street and everyone looks at it the press looking at it say hey how are you losing? This thing went to the moon already. And the funny thing about uh, the, the uh, financial report is they will never stand up for those people because you had your opportunity. That's Wall Street. You missed your opportunity. And that's how they look at it. I'm all about, hey, I didn't miss any opportunity. I know the fraud's here. Fix it. And that's what I'm trying to say. But in the stocks that we're following, we never got to run from here to 300 or 400 or 500, which I truly expect to happen. They did, and that's why it's tough to get reporters to get behind the GameStop and AMC. They, they're basically saying, hey, you had, your, you had your day out there, you know, you blew it. What can you say? And that just why I've spoken to people and that's what they all say. And I got it and I'm with you on that. Like, how did you miss this? My friends with the highest, we sold it, my friends, and it's 50 people we were in this thing. The highest we sold it was 118. I wrote the report on it. I didn't really know how big it was because I didn't study it for a, a year. And at 118, we were kissing the ground and saying, holy shit, we just made, you know, <laughs> look at the money we made. On the on GTI and, and finger motion, we've been documenting this from the beginning. So you know everything about it in GameStop. And just remembering GameStop, guys, and you know. GameStop was shorted down from 50 down. I don't know how high AMC was. I wasn't an AMC follower. But GameStop was shorted from 50 down. And when it turned and I figured it out, it was out of control at three and three quarters. I knew it was going to go. So the, those guys were in the black, the shorts, the whole way down. In our stocks, these guys are upside down right from the get-go. This is all turmoil right now. They didn't have 50 points to play in this thing. And 25 cents for GTI or 28 yeah, cents. GTI, right? they, yeah, GTI has been, I would say the average on GTI is probably 70 cents or 60 cents, and it goes lower every day. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the high below. Finger motion, we know it's around 5 or like probably 480 right now. So we're not far away from every trade that they're in being underwater. It's very different than GameStop. The big boys were short from 50 down, and they got roasted alive. Imagine being short only up 30 cents higher or a dollar higher. That's a very different game. Well, I was in, you know, I was in New York City as a reporter and anchor when Bernie Madoff was arrested. In fact, I had a friend who was at the Christmas party for Bernie Madoff. Her husband worked for Bernie Madoff's firm. Had no idea what was happening, obviously. Bernie Madoff was at the Christmas party the night before he was arrested. And then that story made headlines for months, you know, and it consumed people. Um, and this, I, when I tell people what this is, I describe it as so much bigger than that. And there were so many warnings that regulators ignored there. But this time, it's like a thousand times the warnings that are being sounded and sirens are blaring and nobody's looking. So when it happens, they can't say they didn't know. 
Oh, that's that's why we put the truck there, number one. And the reason, and the number one reason why this is bigger than any financial crime, because the liability is infinite. There is no there is no ending the liability till they buy it all back. And that's why it's so deadly. That's the difference. Bernie Madoff, I gotta tell you a funny story. Between Bernie Madoff and Jeffrey Epstein, I spoke to an attorney yesterday about this. I had connections on all the trading desks and no one covered these people. Do you do business for Epstein? Nope. You do business for Murdoch? Nope. Nope. Never did a trade. Market makers. No one, no one did anything with these guys. Where were they getting all their money from? No one, no one, I don't know anybody who had an order from them. If you said to me, if I sat in a room with 10 traders at 10 different firms and say to them, hey, did you, get, did you get an order flow from Stevie Cohen? Oh, every day, every day, every day, every day. How about this guy? Yes, every day, this guy. Bernie Madoff, nope, never got an order from him. Never had his account. Who had his account? No one had his account. So whoever had his account, it, it must have been one person, but it was kept so secret, no one knew about it. Zero. And that's not Wall Street. Wall Street is a small place. Everyone knows their business. The gentleman that raised all the money, Terry D. Luchet from Paris, was my client. He was raising money for Bernie Madoff, and he committed suicide because he basically, I guess he killed everyone in his world. He killed himself, and that was my client. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Was, that. that was my client, Terry D. Mm -hmm. D. Luchet. I forgot how you pronounce his name. But he was my client. He never did anything. He never said anything about the guy. No one said anything. He was raising money for him. That's it. And what happens? He couldn't handle it. He probably killed everyone in the, in his country, and he could he killed himself in shame. I think in the case, dragon, yeah. I think in the case of the Madoff situation, most people got because uh, I had a I had a very a, a, a acquaintance, a good acquaintance, who had a lot of money in there. But I think everybody got their money back, or most of it back. It's not going to happen <laughs> in this in this situation. Not everybody's going to get their money. back. If if it was me and I sold that much money when they got me, they would have found twenty five cents. I would have been broke under an underpass by then. <laughs> <laughs> you would have known that something was going on. Ken Griffin is buying homes like crazy, correct? Yes. And no one's. I've been posting, calling him Scarface for years. I've been yelling about this guy. And it's a homestead state. And he's but he's bought houses, the biggest apartment in Chicago, in London, New York, and in Florida, he's taken over, I think it's Star Island down in Miami. He's taken over Palm Beach. He owns, you know, Palm Beach isn't that big, everyone. He's taken over Palm Beach. I mean, this guy's been flooding money into real estate. Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, you never hear boo about them buying properties like this. Boo. You never hear anything. So again. Her that is, he is exactly doing what a drug dealer would do. Pat Byrne did a story about DNDN, how the how uh, hedge funds are killing the soldiers so they can buy a Maybach, which is a very expensive car. I'm standing at the Miami Hotel. Who walks past me? Ken Griffin. I walk outside to film him. I don't want to. His security was looking straight at me, so I don't want. I may believe I was filming the world. And what car is he getting into? A Maybach. So Pat Byrne called it right on the nose 20 years ago. Now, I, that's to me, that was the best call I've ever seen because he got it right on the nose. That's what they all do. And here it is. He was standing getting into one. Arca Bulls had a, he put up his uh, master's trader class up for free for this week and, and next week. And I encourage everybody to just go listen to that. But also he has a story about Ken Griffin in there and how it inspired him. A quote made him so angry from him. I'll just tell you it had to do with Kobe Bryant, the Staples Center, and Ken Griffin. And I'll leave it at that, and you guys can go find it. But it's it's worth the listen. And that's what motivated Arca to become the trader that he is. He's a good, he's a good man, he good is, person. And I, I've said it a hundred times. It's impossible to actually trade on, uh, fund, on the technicals and security fraud. It's impossible. I, I agree it's good in Apple, and NVIDIA, and these other crazy stocks, all these other stocks. But to sit here and say this stock or finger motion is going to hit here and go back, they're, just, they're using his numbers to attack us, using it against us. That's all they're doing. Whether it's, break, oh, it's breaking support. They're going to break support no matter what it does. They're just going to keep doing it.
So again, this is he's he does great work, very detailed. But I've always said, hey man, go stick with Apple and those things. I don't I don't know if Rumble has a CEO, but this guy is saying that Chris Wicked Wickedims is saying that the CEO Chris Pavlovsky of Rumble has tweeted he wants to fight naked shorts. So <laughs> Oh. It should be in your it should be in your Twitter, both of you, to maybe look into that and me. If anybody can figure it out, let me know because I I'm not. Uh, I didn't know Rumble's a public company, but maybe. I don't know. Well, if there is any contact, <laughs> if, if you could share it or let me know about it, I have no problem. He, t- he tweeted working. it to you. I mean, he whatever Twittered it. Okay, so I'll I'll go back and look at it. We'll try to knock that down and try to break that door down. Listen, yeah. everyone. All we have to do is a crumb. Everyone just kick in a crumb, send a tweet, reach out to somebody. I have calls with people that have connections in South Korea. Never in my life that I think that the only thing I ever did to South Korea on my way to Singapore was stop there at the airport. Now I have to go there. I mean, just never thought about it. You know, how am I the world traveler going to South Korea to save the USA? Think about how crazy this is. Me being William. That's it. (laughs) <laughs> Before but getting, you go, you should probably explain if, if people are new on this call or, or if they listen to it later and they see you talking about GTII and see it where it is now and how far it's fallen, just explain to them what's happening there and what you expect to happen. And uh, while you answer that, one guy asked, where's all the selling come from? Where's all the liquidity coming from in GTII? Sorry to interrupt. Okay. No, listen, the look, naked shorts are a market maker exemption that the SEC created, I don't know how many years ago, and basically it allows certain people to sell stocks without borrowing it. For a market maker, they would, if you come in to buy 100,000 shares of GTII, the market maker would be gladly to sell it to you at 26 cents, and most of the time they would go on to bid at 25 cents and try to buy it back. All right, that's what a market maker used to do. In today's world, they sell it to you at 26, then they hit the 25 bid, and they manipulate the stocks using this, this exemption that allows them to sell stock without borrowing it. They turned it from a normal act of business to a criminal enterprise. Ken Griffin will sell stock in, in a stock at 50 bucks, 49, 48. I'm sure they killed. Peloton, Beyond Meats, GameStop, Ames, you name it, all these high flyers are met by Ken Griffin, the big boys, and they slaughter them down because the endless selling, like you see in Finger, like you see in GTII, you're learning in these small stocks what's happening in the big names, okay? They're there. They slaughter the big names because that's big money. They're not playing in these small stocks because we don't have enough volume for them to play the game. Selling 500,000 shares of GTII down here, it doesn't mean anything to these guys. They want to sell 500,000 shares of a $20 stock and keep selling it down. That's real money. Think how much money was made on the GameStop when these guys, when the stop, when they finally put the plug on it, stopped the trading on it, right? These guys were vultures. They sold it all the way down. They made billions down. They lost billions up, but other people made billions going down. And you never heard boo about it. That's what they do. That's the big boys. What we have is small creatures here. We have the low-hanging fruit. Lynn Partners is, is a shithead out of Madison Avenue that lends money, an unregistered toxic lender. He lends money, and they short versus that debenture. And Kramers, if most people don't know GTI, they're criminals out of Long Island. They are the toxic lender in GTII. They've been charged by the SEC numerous times, labeled bad actors. Uh, what's her name? What's the reporter, William? The one that called me that wasn't stupid. Who's that? Um, Ma- Ma- Megan Morchison, Greg and Morgan. Gretchen. Gretchen, Gretchen. Gretchen Morgan. Boy, did you butcher her name? I know it's because, you know, it's complicated. She told me on the phone that the FBI wants the Kramers put away. 
they were loan sharking people and threatening people. She did a story on them. She knows all about naked short selling. She she was trained under Pat Burns. She knows all about it. I have no re- I, no idea why she stopped. She, I thought she was doing a story on them, and she never did. Why she, she wrote a book. She wrote a book called uh, I Have It. These are the plunderers. How private equity runs and wrecks America. That might be where she put her energy. I haven't read it yet, but I bought it. Right. I used to call her up and said, "You told me about these guys." I said, "How did I have to go kill them?" I mean, what? This is this is your people. You wrote the story, and she just she said the FBI wanted them, and I'm like, "We've had shareholders to go to the FBI. They all know about these guys." This, they continue to operate. William, we all know that they went from New York City, where they got caught, because now shorting stocks against the debenture, there's a, uh, a, it's called usury. They're basically, it's an interest rate now, and it's charging, it's usury fraud. So they all left the state of New York and they popped up in Virginia. The Kramers and their friends and Alpine are so crazy, they need a prime broker. We're hearing through the grapevine, they're raising $10 million to start over again with a new prime broker, and they want to sell clear so no one can see what they're doing in their house. That's what kind of criminals we're dealing with. Until someone locks them up, they keep changing their stripes and keep coming up as something else. And that's the game. There you go. That's GTI. What's going to happen to GTI? We believe that number is 450 million shares short. We documented it. I don't know how many years have been documented, William. I, I've lost track. I can't remember. Three years, four years of this nonsense now? Been a while. Um, they, they, they don't cover anything. We have proof from the NSCC about naked shorts and GTII. It's in a court document. It's right there. You can see yourself. It's all over Twitter. Alpine has a concentrated short position in GTI. I've, in 24 years, I've never seen a name of a company that's mentioned on the short side because on the short side, just imagine if you were long uh, Peloton at 100 and Goldman gets fined for naked shorting Peloton down to $10 or $6, wherever it is now. You lost $95 because of fraud by Goldman Sachs, and they put it in a document. The SEC finds Goldman uh, $10 million for naked short selling in Peloton. How many institutional investors and investors with Sue Goldman? Everyone, correct? So you never see their names on the short side. You'll see it on a pump and dump on the long side. They're the first ones that always list the names. Oh, XYZ was pump and dumped by this small-time criminal pushing up the stocks to make himself a million dollars. It's always listed. On the short side, never listed. Go through all the SEC files, FINRA's fines, everything. You'll never see a name on the short side. Oh, they were fined for mismarking tickets. What tickets? How many stocks? Is it two stocks? Is it a thousand stocks? What were the prices of the stocks? And they did it. They never tell you this, the amount, the stock, how much money they made. And then they never say both. GTII has the proof, even more proof than MMTLP. And they have a lot of proof. And it's just this is, so crazy. It would be such a great campaign platform for a smart politician who wanted to rally the masses. Because it's anyone, as you say, William, anyone who pays taxes, has a 401k, a pension, invest in any way, you know, these are, everyone's impacted in some way. So if you want to go after the everyman, a politician would be very smart to do that in an election year. I also want to mention, we forgot not legal advice. We all look to him for our advice. Oh. He can tell that whole MMTLP story too. So, Well, well I just looked at GTII, they're still hitting it. A million yeah. seven, boy, they really, I just. Well, somebody, <laughs> since you brought up GTII, um, Al is wondering, are they starting to cover now? And I'm asking you, uh, Hamster. Well, they sold 70, 78% yesterday was shorted at 29 cents. You actually think they're covering? If you listen to this call, they have never covered anything. If it goes to zero, which it won't, okay? If it goes to zero, they pay no taxes on it. That's their game plan. That's the whole game plan. 
Look at VOCL. VO is a VOCL. It's a half a penny. They don't cover. They just keep selling more. What's the difference? It's a half a penny. We'll hold it down. People will give up. They'll take tax breaks. William, did you sell your vocal? I did. I got out at you did it point you zero it zero five seven. <laughs> I had my daughter sell hers at a penny. Okay. I she got a better price, price than I did. I'm never. Just, I said, take the money what you got left. You lost seventy nine cents. I says, go buy this stock and at least try to turn it around. You may not have a lot, but you'll have something. I bought, and that's what they, and that's what Wall Street wants you to do. That's the game. I bought six shares of uh, that Z something or other. <laughs> right. CJYL. <laughs> yeah. I overpaid the for it. Stock ever. <laughs> and, and the only reason I know about it is the biggest player that I know. Is, is involved in it and i'm just following what he's saying that's it I'm, i don't put any energy towards it i could kill less that's not my fight i'm here to stop the counterfeiting the equity market everyone is around is helping out william we can't stop it i told everyone on the call a thousand times chris how many times did i say we don't have a gun in a badge about ten thousand i say it every day we can't <laughs> stop it we need a government official yeah. we put the truck in front of the sec as a reporter if you saw this truck 13 times in front of the SEC reporting this crime, like Charlie Payne has seen, and I know Charlie Payne. Charlie Payne's got a great job. I don't want to make him lose his job fighting the street. You can see how they, they attack the messengers when you go after them. All right. You know that. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows that. That's the first thing they do. They attack the messengers. And yeah. if you saw the truck, you got to say, hey, this is interesting. I'm at the SEC enforcement conference. Hey, maybe someone should enforce this. What are these people yelling about? Instead, they walk right past it. Mark Bazile was standing right there. He yelled at Gary Gisler. They took pictures of him. They filmed him walking past the truck. He didn't put his head up and he walked right past it at the front door of the Mayflower in Washington, D.C. at the SEC Enforcement Conference. What else can we do? We could have Kristen on. Yeah. Trying, trying. Um, when you talk about GTII, William and I and everybody on this call pretty much knows why when you say it's not going to go to zero. But if there's somebody new on here, explain why it will not get completely destroyed and they can walk away. Well, they have to cover the stocks. They can't get to get a good closing transaction. And I've been yeah. trying to. These guys are trying to get people to sell. So you see the volume building. What's it building towards? They're building, they're building it because they want you to think that people are selling. I just got a text message from a guy who says he's going out to buy a hundred thousand right now. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just so he's buying a hundred thousand. He's almost buying, you know, what percentage of the volume he's buying? But they just keep, they're trying to, they wash trades. People volume of these stocks of fake. It's, they make the volume big. They go back and forth with themselves. I told you that. I sell 100000 from account A to B, B back to A, A back to B. And if you do it five times, selling 100,000 shares back and forth, the volume is inflated. It's called a wash trade. I put the, I put the definition up 80,000 times that it's a wash trade, meaning they're selling stock back and forth to create the illusion of this volume. And there is none. It's just make-believe. We put up... How many times have we put up uh, uh, the, the Kramer's LLCs or Alpine's LLCs, the daisy chains of LLCs that they have? How many LLCs does everyone have? I don't know. What do you have, 50, 300? Who, who does that? And this they, this they gentleman, to able to follow it. this gentleman's asking a question about GTII, but maybe you could link it to vocal or dbmm or some of these other seller box stocks he's wondering what what if they shorted all the way down to zero then they don't have to cover i'm not sure what's happening in gtii well, but that you know what i i don't know what the attack is about or what they think they're doing but if i was the ceo of any of these companies or maybe that new consultant who i'm trying to reach out to i was told to reach out to by one of the biggest holders is come out and issue another dividend, torture them again, right? What does it, a special dividend, everyone, creates a panic. Look what happened to MMTLP. 
it's it's created a panic. So why not issue a new creative dividend? Try something. Don't let these guys keep bullying you around. And for those who keep asking, you know, people ask me about why did the company fail on mergers? Call ended. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't end the call. I think his battery ran out, so we'll just wait. Um, a couple of these questions, particularly this one about, uh, oh gosh, I can't find it. Ham needs to take accountability, Michael. Yeah, maybe that's right. And I can't, you know, the, the story isn't over, but I can't uh, say that GTII's price looks great now. But it goes along with someone's question from yesterday, which I thought about overnight. And I answered it at the time. I forget the question exactly. But I answered it that this isn't the time to be focused on selling, although you can. I'm, I'm not a diamond hands guy. But when we're trading these stocks which are all speculative they're all being under they're all under attack one thing michael it like this person says down here um he says he he bought it on the dip and he doesn't have he's out of out of money and and um uh, uh um anyway i can't find it the point is we can only spend our dollar once they just keep doing it over and over and over again and the apologists and the people who just won't see it they're part of the issue because they're saying hey it's normal systems are in place these are good clients and it just goes on and on and on i i have one question to ask you how is it those two companies that uh, Kristen brought up, or is it Kirsten, that Kristen brought up, um, uh, or the companies that Ham always brings up, how is it every company that Jeffrey Lind, Jeffrey uh, Easton at Lind Partners funds goes down? How is it that every single effing CEO and team and idea that follow the rules on NASDAQ that go into SPACs, that go into uh, the over-the-counter markets. How is it every single one of them gets washed away in a tsunami of short-selling cleansing? I'll tell you why. Those, those morons over at the SEC are training their staff to go after CEOs, not the cr criminals. The CEOs were a problem back in the 60s and 70s. When the over the 70s in particular, when the over the counter market was uh, popping like popcorn, it's just like uh, uh, racism. As Hillary gets us going after the Bull Connor racism, when she was campaigning for uh, uh, that senator from uh, Barry Goldwater, when she was young, she campaigned for Bar Bo Barry Goldwater. But now she's, you know, with the with the campaign of a convert, she's saying that everywhere she looks, she sees white racism and supremacism. All right, maybe it's true. I don't don't know because maybe I'm blind. But the point is, she's going after something that happened and it was horrible 40, 50, 60 years ago. There's new issues today. Do you think God gives us the same moral issue that was given to a previous generation? How can we be tested morally if we can look back at what the previous generations did wrong? We are presented with new moral issues, new complex moral issues. And the racism of today is different than it was with Bull Connor and all those assholes. It's the same with it's the same with uh, uh, 
criminality on Wall Street. The SEC trains their little people that come in quickly and then get a stamp. Hey, I went to George Washington Law and and I, I worked at the SEC and now I want a job at Rose Gibbons Law Firm. I was in and out of there in two years, had a few drinks, had a little fun, met a couple people, met my uh, husband, but now I want my job. I want my payout. But they are trained to go after the CEOs. They're not trained to go after the the, the uh, Ken Griffins and et cetera. They're not trained for it. And I, I, I just um, I just don't understand how every single CEO can be wrong. They still have this mentality that investors deserve to be killed in the over-the-counter market, and investors, CEOs. Are all they're all crooks. So Jeff Easton, who has the training of day trading Yahoo, that's his bona fides. Day trading Yahoo. Arrogant, arrogant crook. Everything I say is my opinion and judgment. Is there to cleanse the markets? So the SEC doesn't have to do anything. Wake up, SEC. Now, to go with something Kristen brought up, uh, uh, I didn't understand the disease, the name of the disease her mother had. Uh, Ham's mother died of breast cancer, and I'm seeing breast cancer in the news a lot, maybe because uh, um, someone I care about is dealing with it. Um, When the criminals like Jeff Easton and Philip Vallier, Hai Lee Kim and Sam Chung and John Howard and Kurt and Seth Kramer and Charlie Mayo, and and they're just they're just they're interchangeable. There's nothing special about what Jeff Easton does, and he knows it. He's probably going to go to jail, but if he doesn't, and this this criminality stops, there's not a firm on Wall Street that would hire him. He has no skills except lying. Charming. Stealing or aiding and abetting stealing. I think he's just a placement agent. I think he's just a front for, for criminal hedge funds. That's what I think. I don't think he has the brain power to put to read those legal documents, much much less write them. Anyway, I get so frustrated with it because we're not seeing real price discovery. Uh, this kind of selling is not com is not computerized. Well, of course they use computers, but they have an advantage. They don't need an uptick to sell. They don't need a locate to sell. They don't ever have to deliver. They don't ever have to settle. They really don't need money if they can link it up against a sponsor's big account. And they probably get a cut on all the fees and et cetera. Congress looks the other way. Professors, associate professors at Georgetown who should be fired Georgetown is a Catholic school. It stands for morals. Joe Angel or whatever his name is should be fired from Georgetown University. But he comes out and is an apologist for it. And the come and the and, and we just get destroyed. But anyway, I got off track. I get it's frustrating. The thing is all of these stocks we're investing in, every single one you can blame you can blame ham or me or frank benedetto or lou or uh 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 borders or you know endless names of people that have ideas but the markets are irredeemably corrupt and the cops are corrupt and congress doesn't care 
we're living in a fantasy world right now. And the sooner we wake up, maybe we can save our planet. I don't know if you guys know, but on New Year's Day, a earthquake, 10, whatever they call that, Richter scale, 10, hit Japan, hit Japan. It moved, it was on the other side of Japan from uh, Fukushima Daiichi. It moved the earth uh, 80 feet. And guess what? The epicenter was right under a nuclear power plant. There's two plants. In each plant, one of the plants, which is over slightly, is the largest in the world. I don't know how many reactors it has. But if it's the largest, it might have 10 reactors, 8, 10 reactors. But what they do in Japan, and this is because of the idiocy of the capitalism, to save money, they just took, at least at Fukushima Daiichi, they took the design of a nuclear reactor in a submarine and they made it bigger. And those, those reactors store their waste on top. So this possibly is another disaster in Japan that's being covered up that is spewing radiation on a scale that you can't imagine. And it comes to North America. March 11th, 2011, Barack Obama, folks, got up and gave a talk might have been the next day. Hillary Clinton, number one, warned everyone in her orbit to stay indoors for three days. Barack Obama came in, out and said, America has nothing to worry about. Folks, just stay informed. Well, I've tried to stay informed. There was a website, ENE. They've taken it down. In Japan, they made it illegal for people to take pictures. Or to even or to even update via social media anything they see around uh, Fukushima Daiichi. Fukushima Daiichi is an extinction level event, but instead of put it, folks, you know, folks, everyone loves folks. The real danger is the the uh, last president but not folks. He was great. Well, what folks did, instead of helping American homeowners, he bailed out the hedge funds so they could continue stealing houses. He wasn't FDR. He wasn't FDR. He wasn't FDR. I guess it was the half-white part of him, but he didn't help anybody. And he spent eight or $12 trillion bailing out Wall Street? What if he had spent a trillion dollars sending American know-how, working with the Japanese to contain Fukushima Daiichi? Instead, our media says nothing about it. Nothing about it. Nothing. Well, now, I, for, I can't even say, I can't even pronounce the name of this new uh, prefecture. Um, but there's two massive nuclear power plants that have probably had complete meltdowns. Not in the press. No one's talking about it. But as that material goes into the ocean, it gets in our fish. As it goes around Japan's, Japan collects all the radioactive soil, puts them in bags, and then they grow rice right there. And Hillary Clinton, you all you all get mad at me. I'm a Democrat and I don't support Clinton. She signed a law. She's a lawyer. What does she know about radiation? As Secretary of State, she said, we'll buy all foodstuffs from, from Japan without testing for radi radioactivity. Rice, seaweed. Seaweed grows in the sea. Fish. But hey, She's not a racist yet. She supported Barry Goldwater in, during the civil rights. 
Bernie Sanders got arrested while that goody goody high shoes went to Wesleyan and and then supported Barry Goldwater. But then she puts you and your children at risk so that you don't know if you're eating Japanese rice or, or rice from Mississippi. And there's no warning label. She did that, but you're mad at you're mad at the last president because he he's a misogynist. What's more misogynist than condemning daughters of the United States of America to eating food and drinking milk that has radioactivity in it? Anyway, it scares the shit out of me that there's a massive nuclear power plant, that there's a, 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 second, a second earthquake just hit, an aftershock. At six on the Japanese scale, which probably translates to eight or nine on the Richter scale. And we don't even hear about it. We live in this, this cocoon here in America. What are we producing? Our, st our last steel company just got sold overseas. How are we going to go to war? And I don't think we should go to war. I think, we, I think we're, we're at loggerheads with Russia because Hillary Clinton lost an election. But we shouldn't be enemies of Russia, but we are. She inoculated, if that's the word, she made it impossible for Donald Trump to even talk to Putin when he was president. And now we don't speak. It's like we're back with the with the uh, iron wall, the 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 Soviet Cold War going on. Why should we be doing this? We we Ukraine has lost the war in the in uh, Europe. Five hundred thousand people have been killed or wounded, or more. But the press that you're reading, they don't talk about it. I'm not going to talk about uh, Israel and Gaza Strip. You know where I stand. Um, it, it brings up too, too much emotion. But you're not getting the facts on that either. You're not getting the facts. And then here we, we're, we're dealing with these stocks. And no one's reporting on it. I applaud Christian, Kristen. I applaud him. I applaud uh, Anna and Patrick. And, and I don't, I didn't, I, I asked her, but I didn't write them all down. And Crucial Mix and uh, Junk Savvy and, and the Statue of Liberty and uh, uh, Busy Brands and 100 and, and you know, Dozens and dozens and dozens of people that are working hard to bring this out. But if you're listening to CNN, if you're listening to Rachel Maddow, if you're listening to ABC, CBS, if you're reading the New York Times, if you're reading uh, the Washington Post on the front pages, you're reading drivel. I am a consumer of newspapers all my life. I can't read that crap anymore. But but it has an impact. It has an impact. It has an impact. And I know I got off track talking about radioactivity, but the, the Pacific Ocean is killed. Do you ever wonder why sharks are eating human beings in the Caribbean and the rest of the world? Why whales come up on the beach? There's no more food in the ocean. Do you know where oxygen comes from on this planet? Do you know where oxygen comes from on this planet? 50% of the oxygen comes from plankton and the other small creatures that live in the ocean. 
What if the radi radiation destroys them? Well, we don't even, Japan just dumped thousands of tons of uh, water contaminated with tritium into the, and there wasn't even a blink. We are all focused on these stupid numbers. And then we give a pass to CBS and the New York Times and the Washington Post because we remember when they were good newspapers. They're not anymore. There's no integrity anymore. And uh, the regulators are going along with it. It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder if the elite know something we don't know and they're just looting on a grand scale. Maybe those uh, young boys and girls that smash and grab at, at Rite Aids and 7-Elevens and uh, uh, jewelry stores, maybe they're onto something because that's what the top people are doing. They're taking dollars printed by their Congress that they own, dollars printed in trillions of dollars, they're trading it so they can put trillions on their side of the table, and then they're taking that trillion, those trillions to buy cars, condos, homes, and they'll be living in New Zealand when the shit hits the fan. But we still blame ham. We still blame, oh, the stock is down and it should, blah, blah, blah. Instead of demanding, instead of demanding proper price discovery, which means full disclosure, it means, in my opinion, bringing back the uptick rule. It also, to me, means if you're going to act as a placement agent or you're going to be a fund that buys, a huge percentage of a company you can't sell you can't trade it and you have an obligation to maintain an orderly market and you have to disclose who the who the customers are i think they have to bring back 16ths 30 seconds eighths quarters again i think they have to bring back trading desks and research. Otherwise, you can't you can't do a deal in a stock. You're going to do a deal in a stock. There has to be a trading desk, and there has to be research. You have to make a market in the stock. Kristen asks, "What's different now than before?" I'll, the first thing that popped into my head: there's not enough compliance officers. When I was active, and when others were. Every step of the way was a compliance officer. You couldn't get away with this shit. Now there's none. You've got a lying, thieving person like Jeff Easton, smiling, and single-handedly destroying dozens, if not hundreds of companies. This is all, as I've said, and you know, it's all my opinion and my judgment. He's a public figure. But no, there's no compliance oversight of Jeff Easton. I don't know if he goes to Temple or to Mass or, or is an atheist. But wherever he goes on the weekend, he feels very comfortable. He's, he's a good man. His lawyers have covered his ass. And then he can put out a press release saying that there's nefarious types calling out his criminal activity. Well, that comes down to, are you talking technically the lawyers covering this and this, or are you violating the law? And when I trained on Wall Street, I was taught, you, you don't look and see if there's a way out. You have to follow the intent of what's there. I mean, the, his, his crimes are legion. No one cares. They blame him. They get upset at him. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 
I would I would agree with some of your your points that Ham. Uh, I, that's what one of you said that we bought, a lot of us bought in while the stock was going up, and we thought it was going to go higher, and therefore we were taken advantage of or something like that. Well, that's one way to look at it. I had a lot of stock up at those prices, and instead of following uh, uh, Warren Buffett's admonition that if it's good enough to take a screenshot, it's good enough to sell. Why? Because I thought it, it was squeezing and it was going to go higher. In the case of both finger and GTII, but particular GTII, I think COSM, that CEO came in and said, you know what? I want to dance in front of these guys, this group of investors. And I want to, I'll pay off whoever I need to pay off to get them to tell my story. And I can get $35 million to my side of the table. While no one's looking. But it's a it's a dangerous game that we're playing here. And with Finger and GTII, the decision comes down. Is there a big short position? There, I you, you may or may not know his name, but there's a senior retired executive a financial type from the Amex who I respect, who said there's no way in hell. There's a big short position in Finger and GTII. Those numbers are all wrong. Well, that's his opinion. He may be right. He says all the data at FINRA and Tom Ronk is only half the story. Well, that's his opinion. He can't prove that he that he's correct, but but he believes why? Because the systems that used to be in place would protect against that. But those systems aren't in place anymore. My my instincts to trade and look at a stock, like right now, GTII is what, 25 cents? Rather than thinking about selling, it's probably the time to be buying. I don't know. I'm not making a recommendation. And it could still go lower. But But the human mind, when it's up, I'm admitting it about myself. I'm not judging you guys. When it was 897, I'm thinking, all right, it's going higher. When it's down here at 25 cents, how should I sell? I think that's where sentiment, trends and sentiment and emotions, the masses are asses, a college roommate of mine used to say. The masses are asses. And there's a re reason herds of cattle will go off a cliff. When there's panic and when groups of people act in concert, they can often be entirely wrong. Of course, their momentum is going to carry them ahead and it's hard to stand against them. But at some point, the panic ends and it turns the other way. So sentiment can turn the other way. The time in an ideal world, the time to be buying is when everyone else is saying, oh my gosh, it's going to go to zero. I got to get out. I got to get out. I got to get out. But it might be true. I'm not giving specific advice. And the time to sell is when everyone's coming in. Oh my gosh, it's going to a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. But the hard thing is to sell at eight and it goes to a thousand, you're going to kick yourself. The hard thing about buying here is if it goes to zero, you're going to kick yourself. There's no sure things. There's no sure things. But I do know that that the, the front man, Jeff Easton and Philip Vallier, they lead CEOs and shareholders to slaughter. Same with power up lending. Same with York, Yorkville Advisors. Uh, Ionic, a lawyer, sent me a letter. They don't short. He said, he stated categorically, they don't short any stocks. Well, I'm not going to take him up on that or challenge him to the definition of short. Because as soon as you go before a judge, you'll have Bill Clinton saying, "What's it depends on what your definition of is is. Where did we lose our moral track? Where did we lose our conscience? 
Where do we stop caring about the children being slaughtered in the Middle East? Thousands of children are being bombed by our ally and with our bombs because their skin is darker than this and they have a different religion, not all of them, but they have a different religion than ours. Where's our, where's our outrage? All right, I'm getting too mad about everything. Um, I did buy Gretchen Morgison's book, which I haven't read yet because I'm still going through this Palestinian book and my eyesight's not so great. So I, I don't read for very long at a time. But here's her, here's her table of content. If you, you might want to buy her book. Uh, her introduction, Money Spinning Machines, Chapter 1, Leon Black and the Art of the Fleece, Chapter 2, The Plunder Plunderers Come for the American Middle Class, Chapter 3, The Politician Who Gave Leon Black his big star, chapter four, one woman against the machine. That's why I get so proud of um, all the women in our fight. And I know oh, that's, that's sexist. You shouldn't say that. Well, it's just my opinion. I've seen it walking the halls of Congress with uh, uh, the Statue of Liberty and uh, Anna and uh, others. And now, Kristen, I'm telling you something. Women are powerful. Women are powerful. And people will listen to the story when women are telling it. No, oh, that's not true. It's a patriarchy and it's been, it's been oppression and white male. Yeah. How would you like to grow up as a, a, a Irish Catholic off the boat, where it says uh, Catholics need not apply. How'd you like to be a impoverished Jew that that escapes the pogroms and the hor horror of Italy and land here with no money and never get into any of the clubs? How'd you like to be uh, an Italian that has to work the the lowest of jobs, even though you have an education better than anyone that, that's riding in your cab or is throwing trash out that you're collecting. But they're all white males. Yeah, but they're part of the patriarchy, whatever. I just think women, women are very powerful. So chapter four, one woman against the machine. Chapter five, the fire sale approach, how one of the greatest giveaways came about. Chapter six, plunderers, great rewards. Chapter seven, skating from the crime scene. Chapter eight, savaging an American power house called Samsonite. Chapter nine, bleeding New Madrid, Missouri dry. They destroy cities. Tax, tax bases, jobs, and we don't do anything. We're worried. We're worried that the last president is an ogre, and and the new this current president wears wears is elegant. He wears elegant suits. Chapter 10, Capitalism on Steroids. No lusher target than healthcare. Chapter 11, a call to action went unheeded. Standing by while corporations practice medicine. Uh, they're just following the science. Chapter 12, like when Hitler invaded Poland in 1939, a special tax treatment that mints billionaires. 
Chapter 13, money for nothing. Investigators home or hone, I would have said hone, but anyway, home in on fleecers' fees and practices. Chapter 14, oppressing indigenous people, bulldozing through our wetlands. Chapter 15, hiding in the background, rarely, rarely held to account, mining for Medicare gold. Chapter 16, special and symbiotic, Apollo goes back to its roots. Chapter 17, no evidence of wrongdoing. That's what, that's what the CEO, in his arrogance and his hubris, Jeremy Frommer, says that he can do an investigation of the trading in his own stock, which is being destroyed by counterfeiters, and he, he adjudges it. No evidence of wrongdoing. Well, here, chapters... Chapter 17, no evidence of wrongdoing. Leon Black makes his exit. Conclusion, who will stop the bleeding? I am going to read it. Just haven't yet. All right. I'll try to calm down. Breathe deep. The gathering gloom. I'll try to calm down. It's 12. 23. Let's get some prices. Vocal is bidding 0 0.0039. Brilliant. He wants to get the hot money out of his stock. Well, it's long gone. GTII, 0.238. The bid is 0.2351. Two million shares. They're going for it. HNRC, that's also down, which surprises me. But it's the, the ask is, is still... Um, where it closed. So it's 0.034 to 0.0379. HNRC has two dividends coming and has a net asset value over, over $2. But some things askew on the treadle. And I'm not sure what, but anyway, that looks like a great buy. Um, Logic, I think I already told you. Logic is uh, five and a half cents, 0 0.053. Logic is going to be acquired by a big company. Good luck to the shorts. GDC, that's an interesting one. It's up seven cents. $2.61, $2.68. That's the one where, um, I'll do it by memory, I wrote it down, but that's the one where the entire float is owned by one group of wealthy investors, and I my, my memory is 1.3 million shares. And they're going to ask, as Ham said here a couple of times, they're going to ask for a physical delivery of half a million shares. That is a setup for the sparks will fly. I, don't, I just don't know how long that takes. ZJYL, $95. Finger, $335, down 0 0.07. They are going to at least have one announcement this week which is earnings, but they may have more, more coming. So I think there might be some surprises for the shorts, but, you know, even if they have good news, the criminals will keep selling to try to convince you it's bad news. And that's where we have to separate. We can no longer trust in the United States of America. We can no longer assume that the mainstream media is telling you the truth. 
the whole truth. It's a, it's a tragedy. HNRA is 189 for the life of me. Uh, that company has 400 million in net present at value of assets. They have about 28 million and 30, I, I don't know. The line of credit plus the money they borrowed to get the deal done is less than 50 million, 60 million. Call it 100 million. Just say they have 300 million in net present value of assets and you know seven and a half million shares outstanding. And it's trading for two bucks. I, I wish the shorts a lot of luck there. Their cash flow positive, their earnings positive, cash flow is more important in oil and gas. And they've got a bank, a real bank. For, for capital and and their reserves are all proven and the criminals think they're going to get away with shorting the stock down? Lots of luck. Uh, Northwest Bio, 66 cents. Man, it's, it's a great day at the races, isn't it? Wolf, 202, down three cents. I wrote down Kristen's stock, but I can't. Oh, ENZC. I want to look that, watch that one. ENZC. 0 0.0242. That's up. And uh, let me see if there, oh, CAUD. One twenty nine. They're they're working their magic there, but I think there's a lot backing that company now. And then um, I think that's about it. Oh, C L N V. That's up. That's at point oh three nine four. Let's see where M-U-L-N is. M-U-L-N is up at 13.69. It's up 65 cents. Anyway, all right, I'm calmed down. Let's go to some of your questions. And I, I won't be upset with any questions. Hey, the one, <laughs> cutie pie. She needs a little nose nose uh, squeeze. If it's the drop before the rocket or the drop before a nickel, no matter what happens, my toes are, toes are still tapping. I like that. I think um, in GTII, my biggest feeling is, I missed the chance to sell. That's my biggest feeling. And now the question is, where do you buy back in? Uh, to me. But the risk with GTII is it's sort of a, a group of three or four companies that don't have much revenue. And the reason to own GTII is the massive short position. But if you don't believe that short position, and maybe I should get this guy on at some point to give you his point of view, but there are smart people that analyze the data somewhat, and they, they, they don't believe that there's a, a short position. I guess Busy wants to come on and talk to you. I don't know. Yeah, do you want to come on live? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just... Uh, okay. 
All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't know if you guys know Don Fizz, but he's he's in town and we're going to go to dinner tonight. So I, I, I that was busy brands. I thought he wanted to talk to you guys. So I apologize for picking up the phone. Uh, N-E-X-I. N-E-X-I. Okay, let me see where that one is. Wow, Bunny, that's up uh, seven. Yearly high of 2035, and it's at 1473. Next immune. I wonder what's going on in the medical. Maybe these are where all the shorts are getting caught out. It could be. They're lending our GTII dividend. I mean, it's possible. Uh, I don't think they need to. Um, I think there's, you know, there's this term hypothecation. Let's look up what the definition of hypothecation is. Okay, to hypothecate is to pledge money by law to a specific purpose. So they pledge your shares for a loan. But then let's look up rehypothecate. I can't spell. Rehypothecate. What is rehypothecation? Rehypothecation is a practice whereby banks and brokers use for their own purpose assets which have been posted as collateral by their clients. Clients who permit rehypothecation of their collateral may be compensated either through a lower cost of borrowing or rebate on fees. So I don't think they need to lend out your dividend. They might be. Look, all they need is a shady lawyer to say, these shares will be free to trade eventually, and then they can lend those out. Um, but why do they need the, to do that with those dividends? They can just fail to settle. They can look the other way when... Um, uh, someone sells them stock that they never deliver. I mean, the counterfeiting just goes on and on and on. But yeah, I mean, I think you're probably right. But I just think it's just another way of rehypothecating, another way of Xeroxing title, selling the same house 20 times. Sorry for upsetting you last week. I don't even remember. Um, I have a low level of being upset because um, I don't like being in this position. And I don't like what's happening with all these stocks. Um, I'm slowly trying to get us, me too, to think in terms of owning, I don't know, a dozen stocks. You can't follow two more, too many more than maybe six, but maybe you can stretch your brain to 12. And then do it sort of like an investment banker or venture capitalist. All you need is, you know, out of 12 stocks, six you might get out of at a loss. Three might be total crap outs, and uh, three will be your will be your gains. And of those three, 
One might be just ginormous gains. Uh, the other two might be just really solid good gains. And then that makes the whole portfolio worthwhile. And if I had to pick the stocks to put money in right now, I think it would be GDC, which I don't know anything about. Not very much in that. And maybe that Z, J, Y, L. But again, not very much. I, I'm talking just, you know, 1% of your assets just to see what happens. But, um, but I think of the stocks that are here. I'm intrigued by this one that the gentleman gave me the other day. Uh, I don't know anything about it, but it showed up here. Oh, it's gone. Shoot, it's gone. Well, I lost it. There was one here that went for $22. And he said he said it was booming. And I said, well, booming. And then I, I said, well, no, I guess you're right. I lost the symbol. So I don't know. I forget which that that one is intriguing because it's it's making new highs on volume. But if if I had suddenly had ten thousand to invest, I think I would split it between Logic and HNRC. And if I had twenty thousand to invest, I would split it between Logic, HNRC, HNRA, and CAUD. And if I had thirty thousand to invest, I would add um, I would add uh, Wolf and finger to that but when i'm saying that i'm talking about a january slash february trade i'm just talking about a trade for long term for for longer term holds i think finger and wolf are both really attractive that one i just mentioned i i can't find and i think hnra as a longer term hold, it's just really pounceable. And of course, I like uh, PSLV. Let me see where that's trading. It's it's eight dollars. It's under eight dollars. I think PSLV. That's as we make profits, and I'm I'm going to do everything I can so we can have some winning trades. I'm going to ask you each time you have a profit to take five or ten or fifteen percent, and e either put it in the Sprott Physical Silver Trust, or to buy physical silver and have it stored somewhere, or have it delivered to your home. Just don't tell anybody about it. Tom M, um, I don't. Seller boxing isn't zero uh, per se. Uh, here, I'll, I'll read it out to you. It's, it's like 0. 0.0001 or something. Let's just get the exact. I mean, you understand, you obviously understand the com, com, context, but technically, it's not zero. Because um, then you don't have a 1099. Okay, here is the first. It's the first. I just Googled uh, uh, seller boxing. First one that comes up by, oh, I can't read the whole thing. Yeah, I got to be a member. I'm not a member. All right, I'll go to I'll go to Market Realist. Okay, the term seller boxing, Tom, refers to an investment strategy which involves reducing a stock to its seller level. That's with a C, not an S. I can't say the letter 
C. Bolombia. Oh, you can't say C. Have you ever considered substituting the letter K for the letter C? Oh, car key, key, wait, Kipling. What a silly bunt. All right, the term seller boxing refers to an investment strategy which involves reducing a stock to its seller with a C level, the minimum level at which a stock can trade, as defined by NASDAQ. Okay, here's the number. The seller level is fixed at, Tom, the seller level is fixed at 0 0.0001. 0 0.0001 which makes you wonder why Lou recommended, maybe he didn't know, I'm not picking on him, but maybe whoever told him, maybe they wanted to keep that stock at 0 0.0001, so it was seller boxed. They can take money out and they don't pay taxes. There is no protection from naked short selling in OTCBB and pink sheets. To qualify for the regulation exemptions, market makers would have to push a stock's price down to have it delisted from the exchange and put it on the OTCBB and pink sheets. There is potentially an infinite spread when the market is no bid to 0 0.0001 offer. And that's that's what. RNVA, DBMM, VNUE, HPIL, GTLL. Um, I, I mean, there's so many of them. I just can't remember more of them than that. So the market makers, like when Lou got everyone to buy HNRA, the market makers were making a killing going from no bid to 0 0.00001 to 0 0.00004 and three. And I hope he got some kickback on that because the market makers made a ton of money. The market makers must first bring down the stock price to participate in seller boxing. The lower they can drive the share price, the wider the percentage spreads they can exploit. How can a stock move out of seller boxing? Well, Jeff Jeff Easton and uh, Jeremy Farmer are going to show you. Once a micro cap stock is boxed in the seller, it doesn't have many uh, alternatives to rise higher. An obvious alternative is to reverse split the stock. But historically, these splits have been ineffective. The market cap generally gets hammered and the stock reverts to its pre-split price. And the reason for that is the criminals just go back in action. There's no buying. They can start shorting again and they're able to steal again. But no one cares. Associate Professor Joe Angel at Georgetown, lying scumbag that he is. It doesn't happen. I wonder how much he gets paid off to say that. So he can have his home in Georgetown and be a member of the Georgetown Business Association, if he is, and waddle his butt down to Cafe Milano. The hottest place in hell is reserved for he who in time of moral crisis remains silent. Credited to JFK and further credited to, to one or two philosophers. The shareholder base, maybe Dante's, uh, Dante was one of them. The shareholder base can sometimes generate enough purchasing pressure to
to keep the market at 0 0.0001 bid. Remember Lou Bravo with, with RNVA and 0 0.0002 offer for a limited time. After that, the market makers repeatedly strike with force by selling to wipe out all of the bids. This is what's coming to vocal. But no, no, this is the path forward. Jeremy Frommer. Jeremy Frommer's in a daze. He went from Jesus Christ superstar to uh, Willie Loman in, in about six months. When retail shareholders watch this happen a few times, they tend to sell their stock the next time at a 0 0.0001 bid. The 0 0.0001 bid and the 0 0.0003 offer market leads to a stalemate. Remember Lou's recommendation of RNVA. And if you don't think there was some Pakshish involved, I think you're as naive as I am. And it, when this happens, market makers may enjoy significant spreads while the real shares are sold at very low prices. The victim company's objective is to avoid the three primary goals of the naked short sellers. Bankruptcy, a reverse split, or being compelled to issue death spiral convertible debt out of desperation. And the fact that Adina Friedman allows this to continue is a black mark on every check that she gets that totals 28 million a year. You know what they want? They want us to buy seven stocks, maybe 20. Every other stock needs to be put out of business because their buddies are their best clients destroying these companies. America's in trouble. Until we wake up and start questioning where did our moral compass go? Is it all just about greed? Kim Kardashian's rear end? And who Taylor Swift is dating? Is that what our life is reduced to? Or do we care about our fellow human beings? Do we care about jobs? Do we care about how we leave the world? As long as the target company continues to pay its monthly burn rate, the company can undertake strategic steps, including ugh, a name change, QCIP number change, dividend distributions, and cancel and reissue procedures. And that's about where the article ends. Uh, I like that article. I think I may print it. But it's so consumptive of ink because it's got a lot of stock photographs in it. Well, I may still do it. Print it. And I'll print. Just four pages of it. Take the color off. Print. All right, so Tom, I don't know if that even begins to answer your question. If GTII goes to zero, they don't have to pay taxes, but do they still have to cover? I mean, under the current regulatory regime, I'd have to say they don't have to cover. Um, Gary Gensler doesn't care. 
the head of the over OTC markets. Let me get his name. Charlie Charlemagne or something. Two C's in his name. Another prima donna. Uh, C. Cumberland. Oh, here it is. The head of the OCC is R. Cromwell Colson. Oh, <laughs> such an important name, R. Cromwell Colson. Anyway, R. Cromwell Colson doesn't care uh, to have the SEC or FINRA enforce delivery. And so, what, Tom, what the shorts count on is that people give up on the stock over time. They sell their shares so they can be the, the market makers and the shorts can be buying that because no real buyers are buying the stock. And over time, it just resolves itself. Ultimately, if you read Susan Trimbath's book, it's over there, um, Dr. Susan Trimbath's book, uh, there's a warehouse where they go put all these unresolved trades. So I would have to say to you, Tom, if the stock got down to being seller boxed, it'd be like DBMM, it'd be like uh, uh, HPIL, it'd be like VNUE, it, it'd be like Vocal is about to be. <coughs> the only way Vocal's going to go up is if Jeff Easton is trying to save Jeff Easton's ass from jail and he wants to set an example. And if they cram you down, nobody's going to put up more money for that company without cramming shareholders down. So it'll have the same effect. I don't believe it, though. I, I think that'll be seller box. Then there's other examples. So no, Tom, I think if it got down to 0 0.00001 to 0 0.00003, is that the right number of zeros? I, I don't think they would have to cover any time in your lifetime. Go to Italy. Go to Italy. I want to go back. Best lasagna in the world. Oh, Meekers, that's very kind of you. Um, I actually, last night when I couldn't sleep, was thinking about it because I don't, you know, this this is a big stall in the middle of my life. And that's okay. I'm not complaining. Um, but I'm wondering, is this, am, should I keep doing this or what, what you know? <laughs> because frankly, if I were back at my old office, uh, Morgan Stanley, sitting at my desk, I wouldn't be telling anybody to buy these stocks. Why? Because, well, I probably wouldn't be allowed to tell you. I might tell you about Finger. I might have told you about CAUD or HNRA when they were 10 bucks, but that would have been a nanosecond. I might follow Wolf. I certainly would be telling you to buy um, Sprott Physical Silver, but I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, this wouldn't be the Melu. So it's, I wonder what, what the hell is going on here? But I do believe um, Wall Street changed. And, and uh, I, I've told you the story. I came back from London and a friend of mine invited me to my old office was having an event at um, at uh, where Duke Sieverts used to be. Um, I think it I think it became called Morton's. I think it became Morton's. Anyway, I went and uh, um, we're milling around 
and uh you know i had my two glasses of wine and uh nibbled on great sandwiches and met various people and i met a young woman reasonably attractive uh sem you know you, you know you're semi good looking i heard all about your disease you may have something i want dear but i've got something you need you need ain't talking about love i'm rotten to the core anyway she was semi good looking she was young um engaging and she came up to talk to me and i i, I eventually i asked her how long she had been uh working here and she said, I think she said a year and a half. She might have said two years. And I said, oh, that's great. How, are you doing well? And she told me her gross. Uh, she said she was doing over just over a million a year. I said, wow, how are you doing that? That, I mean, it took me a long time. Uh, to. She said, well, um, when we bring money in, I charge them to manage the money. She said, you don't know how hard it is to manage money. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I do know the stresses, but managing money isn't digging ditches or climbing telephone poles or driving trucks across the United States or hauling uh, bags of, of uh, feed stock off of a boat onto the dock and and to shipping or farming or painting houses or yeah managing money is a pretty posh job anyway she said it's you don't know how hard it is so we charge i said well how much do you charge she said i to my memory she said three percent i said three percent what is that based on she said what what's it what, the assets in the account. And I said, well, what happens if you place the money into a managed account? Do, do, does the client get it to go into that account free or into a mutual fund or a new issue or a private placement? Oh, no, we get the commission for that. So you charge 3%. It's a wrap fee just to manage the money. And then you still can make and I said, boy, <laughs> I didn't say boy. I said, girl, I didn't say girl. I just smiled at her. And I said, man, I when I was doing this, um, we had to make money with ideas. And, uh, you know, if, if I got clients into a stock, I normally discounted the way in. And only if it went up would I charge maybe full commission or or a higher commission but if it didn't work i didn't make any money and uh the fact is there were some some uh products that made sense which had some commission but th that the investor didn't pay the issuer did but otherwise we didn't have that and i i couldn't believe people are willing to pay three percent but anyway, that's what Wall Street is now. They have young people telling you, let's just manage the money. They don't know stocks. They don't teach you about stocks. They don't teach you how to trade. There is no research that's meaningful. So sometimes, Meekers, I wonder if that's what I'm meant to try to do is teach you, but also learn myself. Um so that maybe we can establish a brokerage firm or maybe establish an investment bank or a fund or something, an exchange where it can be honest and where there can be real price discovery, where there can be delivery. And we'll do our own self-regulation, but it'll be honest. And companies can come to us for capital formation and they know their aftermarket will be given a fair shake. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, Meekers, but I, I do keep going 
forward um, believing that somebody above is is guiding it. And uh, it's not like I get a, a, William, this is God. I don't get a phone call. But it feels that way that I started doing this. I was just talking with Ham about it uh, this morning. I remember when I started, I did it to help Ham, to stand with Ham, but also to try to fight back against the Fudsters. And I don't mind if people sell their stock. Don't get me wrong. I just don't want you to sell the stock because someone manipulated you, bullied you. But then it be, it all becomes self-fulfilling at some point. Anyway, that's a long answer, Meekers. I appreciate what you said. <laughs> we make money the old-fashioned way. We Xerox it. I don't think it leaves Trump out. I think Trump is a moral man. Um, he's complicated uh, because he's a he's a self promoter, and he got trained by uh, Khan Roy Cohn, and Roy Cohn I don't like at all, but Roy Cohn said if you get hit, hit back, and um, I think. Trump lives in a rarefied air. I think he's got insecurities, um, as most of you do. Luckily, I don't have any. Uh, but as he was a younger man, he had three things which attracted women. And I've been at some parties and places where certain stage of life certain women are in, but um, he was tall all his life, still is. He used to have a full head of hair, blonde. I don't know if he's really a good looking guy, but when he when you're young and tall, that's what women want. He's a, a really wealthy guy. And, and you, when you're young, certain kind of, some women want that. And then he had cameras everywhere he went, he had cameras. So in his past, combined with a certain level of insecurity, I think, and a, a acquisitiveness, he, um, I'm sure he made mistakes with women, but it's easy for as we get older to look back and judge that, but I don't know. Um, uh, I wasn't there. I do know, I do know that he banned Epstein from our a lago. Uh, when he found out what was going on, he told everyone to stay away. I do know that, um, I mean, I, I don't know. He's made mistakes, and uh, there's some of his agenda that I don't agree with. But I sincerely think he's Trump is trying to be a moral man, and he's trying to make a difference. Um, he's raised great children, four great children. Um, he remained friends with his first wife. I don't know how he is with Marla Maples, but his children love him. His children don't do drugs. They don't smoke crack. They don't go out with whores. Um, I, I think he's a moral man. Biden, um, I used to think was moral. Um, I listened to Biden uh, one night on the radio years ago. I think he was on Larry King or something. And he said that his mother taught him that when you had power, when one had power, you had an obligation not to abuse those 
without power, not to take advantage of, of those. And I used to think Biden was pretty good, pretty good guy. But I met him once. I went to a fundraiser and he, just to be blunt about it, he was a total jerk. He was an arrogant a-hole to me. I will give him credit. He stayed long enough to shake everybody's hand and and talk with everybody. I got a picture with him. But he he's a he was an arrogant guy. I also bought into the idea that he was Amtrak Joe, that he was the poorest senator in Congress. Well, now he's wealthy beyond dreams. And uh, I think he's a racist. And I think his crime bill destroyed families in the United States and ruined the lives of young men who made mistakes his son has made. But the difference, their skin was dark or darker. Now, I, I don't think Biden's a particularly moral guy. Goes to the same church I do. I mean, not same church, but the same religion. And I don't want to judge him. Uh, and I won't. And he has the right to forgiveness and uh, understanding. But I don't think Biden's a particularly moral guy. My dad would totally disagree. My dad would lose his temper with me to hear me say that. But I don't think Trump's issue is uh, lack of moral leadership. I just think we can't go back to the 70s in terms of economic strength. And I think if, I, I don't think Trump's going to be president. I think our next president will be Hillary Clinton. Although this Epstein stuff may change that. And maybe it'll be Gladhand Newsom. Um, Pelosi's nephew. Um, but I hope if Trump comes into office, I hope his first flight is to Moscow, and I hope he sits down with Putin. And I wouldn't mind it if his second flight was to Beijing, and he sits down with Xi. And I wouldn't mind it if he then went to India and I wouldn't mind it if he then went, it'd be a, an ask too far, but if he went to Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and, uh, and uh, Israel, and then maybe went to Brazil, I think the United States has to enter the world anew and as we are meant to be not as neocons, not as idiots, not as Victoria Newland's dream of bombing everywhere we go. Somehow we have a right to spread democracy like it's mayonnaise. No, we have to, we have to pull in and uh, be true to our ideals again. Uh, MMTLP, I think, Jason, when you say, when can it get resolved? Uh, you have control of that in your own hands right now. I believe, Jason, you should request that your shares are transferred to AST. Then when you get NextBridge, MBH, when you get NextBridge, which I can't hear, is that it? I can't find my shares. 
But anyway, when you get next bridge, you've resolved it. Jason, you've resolved it. If you get your next bridge shares, you've resolved it. When you bought MMTLP, Wall Street owed you one share of Nextbridge for every unit, every unit of MMTLP that you purchased. You have that in your control right now to move this falsehood of MMTLP into American stock transfer and get a real share of Nextbridge. Now you, I don't know your your understanding of what Nextbridge is, of what Nextbridge is. I think the whole younger generation of investors has have been spoiled by instant results. Nextbridge is 5.7 billion barrels of oil. Question is, is it proven? Probable? Possible? Is it proven producing? Is it proven behind pipe? Is it probably there or is it moose pasture? It's your question. I know these symbols are wrong. Uh, Exxon used to be that symbol. Pioneer, I'm not sure. But Exxon just bought Pioneer for $30 a barrel proven reserves. It's, it's apples and oranges in one sense because Pioneer is a manufacturing operation. But it gives us at least a bit of a comp for proven producing reserves. And maybe, maybe, I don't know how their reserves were broken down. It probably went beyond producing. It might have been behind pipe and it might have been, uh, uh, you know, step out wells. I, I don't know. I didn't study it that closely. But they paid $30 for a barrel of oil in the ground when Exxon bought that. Jason, let's just assume 10% of those barrels are proven and can be produced. I think that is incredibly low. Why? Because the people in the know increased the ownership of the Or Grande to 100%. But let's just use 10%. Let's just be as negative as we can be. I, I miswrote this. So we we would have 570 million barrels of proven oil. 
So because I went so low on that, let's use $30. Let's say someone would pay $30 a barrel. The exact price Exxon paid. They paid stock. And it could be stock. So let's multiply that by $30. There's $17 billion worth of assets, Jason, 17 billion. Let's divide it by the existing amount of shares. I actually think in a resolution, they should use 165 million, but let's use 265 million. which is the outstanding shares the last time I looked. Jason, that equals $64 a share. I don't know what you paid for it. Let's say you paid the highest price of $12. That's five times your money, Jason, that you can resolve all on your own some. You can move your MMTLP to American Stock Transfer and get NextBridge shares and you've gotten 5X on your money at the lowest po possible calculation that I can do. The most negative. Now, there are still some risks in oil and gas. Oil could go to zero. The world could blow up. Uh, uh, Texas could fall into the Gulf of Mexico. People could stop driving cars. We just make a mandate that all oil has to stay in the ground. There are risks. But I tried by using 10% to take, take that risk into account. So that's $64, Jason, that you yourself can resolve. Well, I bought one share of MMTLP. Wall Street owes me one share of Nextbridge. And currently, everybody's waiting. So while they're waiting, I can make the decision. I'm going to resolve this myself. I'm going to exchange MMTLP for Nextbridge, and I'm turning my $12 into $64. On paper, yes, it's private. It's not liquid, but I'm up already five times without paying taxes, and I don't have to sell it, and it's not getting manipulated by short sellers. And as far as I know, they have a world-class team moving forward, and the story's only getting better. So, Jason, the resolution is in your hands. And that's what I recommend. Okay, now you're asking about MMTLP. I think you're a year away at, at best, at best. I think you have to plan in your head that it's gonna be a year away. Now, what are the positives? I see three positives. One, Nextbridge is moving forward with alacrity and it's getting bloody expensive to take the risk of not doing anything. And even overcompensated, dull head, dullard lawyers can see that. Secondly, you've got the five insider men 
and they're all men who have the big ownership in them in uh, next bridge also m m d l p they're working to resolve this and they're doing their goal uh, according to mccabe the offer better be six hundred dollars or better or the answer is going to be hell no and here's a lawsuit so you don't have to do any work you don't have to come on when is it going to be resolved? You don't have to do anything. You know that Greg McCabe is going to get it done. He's going to get her done. And I guarantee to you, he's going to say, before I sign this, I want to assurance that everybody gets the same deal. Greg McCabe's honor is not for sale. And I've never met the man. It's just how I judge him. The third thing in your advantage is you've got the MMTLP community, as we've discussed, pushing to get the story out there. And as soon as Congress or a regulator who gives a damn sees that this is affecting Americans, they may press for what you call resolved. And then it could happen, it could happen very quickly. Now, Jason, there's two ways it could get resolved. One is Wall Street. And I, I, I don't know. I guess it I guess it's just endlessly fascinating to pick at a cavity or stare at your navel or uh, one is Wall Street. Jason, this is the path we're going on down right now. It's legal. This is what's happening. You have 104 broker dealers. You have an unknown quantity of prime brokers. You have the SEC, FINRA, the OTC markets. You have Nextbridge Holdings. You have Flame On LLC that represents uh, MMTLP. You have the criminals, the hedge funds, et cetera. You have the DTCC. You have the NSCC. You have market makers. You have the executive branch, Senate, Congress. And then down here, you have We Few. You have the shareholders. Okay, so Jason, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? When is it going to get resolved? When's it going to get resolved? Mommy, are we there yet? Are we there yet? When's it going to get resolved? When's it going to get resolved, Mommy? Mommy, are we there yet? Mommy, why aren't we there yet? I'm too much of a, I'm too childish because it's money. I can't decide, Mommy. I got to keep asking you, Mommy. And you must know, Mommy.
I'm just guessing, Jason, but I think there's 300 lawyers involved with 104 broker dealers. There's probably 50 lawyers involved with the prime brokers. There's probably 10 lawyers involved at NextBridge Holdings. There's probably five broke, uh, lawyers involved at Flamon. There's probably at least five brokers representing the DTC, five lawyers, sorry, lawyers, all lawyers representing the NSCC. There's probably at least 50 lawyers representing the market makers. I know I can add up in my head five lawyers representing us. There's probably a lot more than that. There's probably zero lawyers at the uh, government level. And then at the regulatory, I'm going to guess five at the SEC, five at FINRA, five at the OTC markets. And I think at a minimum, the criminals probably have a total of 100 lawyers. You could argue with me on that, uh, Jason. I probably made an arithmetic mistake. My guess is there's at least 550 lawyers working on this case, Jason. How long do you think it's going to take for 500 lawyers representing a dozen 15 different constituencies in total. How long do you think it's going to take for them to resolve it, Jason? How long do you think 500 lawyers are going to take to resolve something? With courts, they're all smarter than each other. They all went to better schools. They have to justify their existence to their clients. They all want to get paid. They've all got to teach themselves because obviously naked short selling doesn't exist. Some of them are at Gibson Dunn on one side. Some of them are at Gibson Dunn at the other. So, Jason, one of the ways uh, MMTLP is going to get resolved, as you call it, is through the legal system. My guess, the legal system takes eight years, 10 years, a dozen years. That's my guess. So, through the legal system... I would say it'll finish. We'll be on the moon again, and maybe even to Mars before the legal cases are finalized. So if it goes the legal route, just get ready to wait. The second way it could be resolved is Wall Street the prime brokers, the broker dealers, there's 104 broker dealers. Not all of them, not all of them are criminal. They just want to get it resolved. You could see Wall Street decide to settle it without this legal crap. Okay, so Jason, how does it get resolved then? One is a gray market. And I'm surprised a lawyer out there hasn't, seize the opportunity to create a gray market, but I guess it's complex. But your broker dealer could call you and say, I'll pay you five bucks. And I, I'm guessing that most people would accept five bucks to get out. I just want to be done with it. But maybe only 10% accept it. Then they come out at, with, at 20 bucks, and maybe five more percent and come out at 50 bucks. That's a great market. Hey, uh, uh, Jason, uh, we have a buyer for your MMTLP at five bucks. Uh, we can buy up to 50,000 shares. You have 10, are you interested? Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but no, I, I, gotta, I gotta go down the list. I'm just calling you. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, Jason, but I listen, I need an answer. 
well, I'm, you're not going to say yes. All right, I'm going to assume you're not interested. If it's still if it's still available, once you make up your mind, call me back. You have my number. Click. Mary Jane, we have a buyer for fifty thousand shares. You've got twenty five thousand five bucks. Are you interested? Yeah, sure. All right, sign this release. Send us an email. We'll have we'll have your money in your account. Uh, within two days, as soon as we receive your release. That's the gray market. The other way Wall Street can settle it is Dagny Tabbert can just take charge and she can call all of the parties into a giant Zoom call and say, this call is not ending until we resolve this. We are going to come up with one price, one offer, the criminals are going to pay it and, and the brokerage firms. Nextbridge is going to issue some shares, and that's our settlement. It's going to include a cash payout. I'm not going to go through my calculation, Jason, but I think it should be I think the payout should be eleven hundred and fifty a share, fifty dollars going to the lawyers, which I think will be thirty billion dollars. There'll be a lot of rich lawyers, and a hundred dollars paid out as a dividend. Now you're going to ask, well, if I've already gone over to AST, am I going to get that? I don't. I have no way of knowing, but my guess is. They're going to make that offer. The lawyers are going to get their thirty billion, and the uh, Nextbridge is going to demand a hundred dollars be paid to Nextbridge shareholders in addition to MMTLP shareholders. So I think that goes to everybody. So that leaves a thousand a share. Well, Nextbridge only has a certain amount of shares available. So I think Nextbridge will allow, the group will allow, that people who are at AST can go back into this settlement, receive $1,000 a share and the divvy, so that the share balancing occurs. Now, will it be at half a million, billion shares? Maybe, maybe it's a little more, maybe it's a little less. For those people who stay in Nextbridge, out of the gate, their shares are worth $1,000 a share. And you've got the best independent oil and gas country on the face of the planet. Cash on hand, cash to acquire. They don't have any of the ESG bullshit to deal with. They can drill. They can build the premier oil and gas country uh, company in the world. So you either have it in the value of your private placement or you cash out with MMTLP. Those are the two resolutions that I see. Now, what's the risk of just staying in MMTLP? The risk is what I just described never happens. And it goes the legal route forever. And at the end of the day, everyone is forgotten. The settlement is for $25. Lawyers take twenty dollars. You get five. Your children, your grandchildren, get five dollars, because Wall Street has convinced Congress that there is no such thing as naked short selling, that it was caveat emptor, and that if you force us to pay this, our banks are going to fail. And look at what the crisis is 
over in the Middle East and in China with Taiwan. And we've got bigger things and, and the banks are too big to fail. And I went to your daughter's wedding. How can you do this to us? So there is a risk that's not zero, that the settlement for MMTLP is de minimis. So if I were you, Jason, rather than say, mommy, 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 when do we get there? You told us two hours ago, and, and it, why? how much longer is it, mommy? Why don't you, Jason, take control of your own resolution I can't find my shares. I've shown them so many times. I can't find them. Just move your stock. Move your MMTLP, which is nothing. Do you understand that, Jason? MMTLP is nothing. It's a fraud. It's an IOU. It's a piece of toilet paper. It's a chit saying, give me my dry cleaning back. It's nothing, MMTLP. I don't know why anyone would decide to take the risk of eight or 10 years of legal action versus Wall Street settlement, settling, and you know Wall Street's set up for the criminals. You know it. If you haven't figured that out now, you know that the, reg the self-regulatory organizations put in place, given impetus by Bill Clinton, regulate on behalf of Ken Griffin, Stevie Cohen, and the criminals. But you want to trust that? And let me address finally one thing. If your resolution is that you want two days of trading, you're, you're, you don't understand what's going on. There, there, there was the possibility of a massive short squeeze for those two days, those three days, those four days. It didn't start. So it ended up, it would have only been the Friday and the Monday the 9th and the 12th, that's gone. The criminals called up Wall Street and said, no, stop trading, halt trading. Remember, the criminals contribute a lot of money to politicians. The criminals generate Goldman Sachs prime brokerage, 76% of their revenue comes from their stock loan desk, which is this bullshit. And then 75% of that is their income. According to uh, 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 Overstock, Pat Byrne, Goldman Sachs Prime Brokerage is just a stock loan department with the name of an investment bank on the front door. So, the constituency is concentrated in a handful of phone calls. We were spread out. And we can't even get through a space call without arguing. So you're a congresswoman. Who are you going to listen to? The bank that gave you half a million dollars to speak before some luncheon somewhere? Or a phone call, disjointed phone call from several people on a space call? Who are you going to listen to? So my point on that is there's a, there's a push for two days training. That two days training is being pushed to help the criminals. It is a get out of jail free pass. It is a go back to go, start over. It is you're free as a bird, pass for the criminals.
So the, the, the two day trading, if you're pushing for that and that's your resolution, you're gonna end up with zero and you'll have no recourse. And, and by zero, I mean five cents, one penny. And you'll have no recourse after the two days are done. So Jason, I gave you a long answer. Uh, when can MMT be resolved? You can resolve for Jason Herman. You can resolve it tomorrow. Call your broker. I want to move my MMTLP to AST. You've resolved it for your own life. You then own, own something real. You're going to have to wait, but it's moving forward. And even if the legal stuff takes forever, if all the other stuff takes a long time, MMTLP is move. Uh, sorry, NextBridge is moving forward. At some point, all the parties are going to want to resolve it because I think NextBridge is going to have a hard time raising a lot of money until it's resolved. All the brokerage firms don't want the publicity. They don't want discovery. Those are the pressures. And the price of settlement keeps going up. But Jason Herman, if you're in a hurry, the best way to get resolved, move your MMTLP to AST, get shares of NextBridge, and you're resolved. You're resolved. Either way, you're going to wait. But why not wait with something that's real than something that's just an IOU that's worthless? And that Professor Joe Angel can say, eh, it doesn't happen. And Jim Cramer can say, caveat emptor. And then the banksters can pour money into Congress and say, if you make us settle at the real value, we're going to go out of business. So do you want to, do you want to give us money through the FDIC and through the Treasury? Or do you want to settle this at 25 bucks? Why would you take that chance, Jason? Why would you sit on, stand there like a statue and hope that someone's going to resolve it for you? Move your shares. Uh, I kept it, I kept it at E. Scott, I kept mine at I I, I kept my shares in my IRA. And I've decided uh, reluctantly, I've decided just to leave them there. Um, despite my negativity, a settlement could change. I mean, the mood toward a settlement could change very rapidly. And it could all coalesce around a number. Even though I have this $1,100 number, Maybe they coalesce around 250 bucks. And um, to me, to have that money in my IRA tax-free rather than as a settlement, which will probably have tax consequences, that's where I'm leaning. Now, what's my risk? My risk is they settle for 25 bucks, not the value of the stock. Well, that's why I keep going back and forth. Uh, maybe I should move it out. And I may still do it, but right now I've decided to leave it in the IRA. So I moved three quarters or two thirds of my MMTLP to NextBridge and I have the rest in my IRA. If it weren't in my IRA, I would move it for sure, but it's in my IRA. So it confuses me. I don't know if I'm making the right decision on that. Um, but I know that leaving it in MMTLP, despite what I think is a right settlement, I'm just one idiot. When lawyers get together and then they bring in the treasury, they may say, you know what? We can't go higher than this number. Screw it. And then it goes to lawsuits, and then it keeps going. So I don't know. 
I'm talking myself into moving it. I'm talking myself into moving it as I'm going. P money, there's no question that there are 650 million shares of MMTLP that right now you and I in my IRA, I can assume it has value because I can move it to AST. But as soon as the airplane has all of its seats full, let's call it instead of 165 million seats, let's just call it 165 seats and the jet, all the seats are full, 165 seats, there are 650 passengers waiting in the terminal to get on that plane. Once the doors close on the aircraft, everyone sitting in the terminal is going to know they don't, they have a counterfeit ticket. And then it's up to the integrity of the airline, of the government, to make good on that ticket. And that goes the legal route. That goes the publicity route. That goes the regulatory route. And how good have the regulators been so far? I'm starting to talk myself into moving. Well, that's the problem, Donna. That's you got it, Donna. You got it. I mean, if if okay, um, I don't have as many shares as you do, but if I move my shares from my IRA, ostensibly, I don't. It's not going to cost me any taxes because there's no value. But if there's a settlement, I'm going to have to pay. I mean, number one, is it short-term or long-term? I don't know. But assume it's long-term. I'm going to have to pay 20% in federal tax, 4.5% in Obamacare, or whatever it is. Call that 25. And then where I live, I'm going to pay 10% or maybe less. Call it 5% in long-term capital gains. So it's 30%. I'm going to have to pay in taxes. Now, they'll argue they gave that dividend to cover some of that, but I have to pay 30% of it in taxes. If I leave it in my IRA and the settlement comes out at the numbers that I think it should be, look, my numbers aren't specifically correct. My numbers, I believe, are in the, in the magnitude which can be a wide range, but I think the magnitude is correct. If it's in my IRA, I delay taxes. And there's a possibility if pressure is on to get it done sooner, I have liquidity. And that might have some value to me in an IRA. So that's one option. The other option is call up, move my shares to AST. And the fact is, Donna, there are some risks there. You know, the values I gave, even though I discounted the value of the oil and gas, you can find out all, they, my experience in oil and gas is it's always something. They always come back at you with something. Well, Bill, I didn't expect to find water in that well. You told me that, well, we didn't use 3D seismic. I picked, I just, I just uh, guessed where to drill it. It's always something. Well, we had a pipe stuck in the well and uh, we're gonna have to kick it out. And uh, well, we kicked it out and we, we 
we missed the missed the zone. So all we can do is start again, and the well is, you know, we need to raise another twenty million dollars. Stocks plummeting, going to zero. Well, well, Bill, we were going to drill twenty-five wells on this prospect, but the first uh, four, only two were reasonably successful and two were dry holes. So we're going to stop. Well, wait a minute. You charged me all this up front, uh, seismic and geology and an overhead and administration. And you promised to drill 25 to 30 wells and you're stopping at four. I'm telling you, there's always something with an oil and gas deal. So that's the risk. But, Donna, if you move out, if I move out of my IRA, go through the brokerage firm and then get it into AST, the fact is there would no, until I sell it, there would be no taxable event uh, if I owned the stock. There'd be no taxable event. The growth would come without taxes. On the other hand, if I own MMTLP outside of my IRA, which is a piece, it's nothing, but there's a settlement on MMTLP, my assumption is that that settlement, I'm not a lawyer or an accountant, but that settlement is here and now, and that gets booked as either short-term or long-term income or capital gains. I, I I'm 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 a completely out of my uh, over my under my head or over my head on in terms of how that would be classified. But I think if you got into real shares, uh, you, your taxes are delayed until you sell. I also believe, Donna, and this is speculation on my part, if you have the real shares, I believe you're going to be given the option in a Wall Street settlement, in a Wall Street settlement, I think you're going to be given the option probably to reverse your decision. Why? Because it's the way they'll true up, it'll, they'll balance the, the various overages and all that. And I think you'll get a cash dividend. If it goes the legal route, I just think it's going to take a long, long time. But I would imagine there'll be lawyers there that sue for pain and suffering, sue for damages, whatever they are, penalties. So I bet there'll be a payout that makes up for that weight. Um, I think it'll be taxable, is my guess. I don't know. It's, it's very confusing. What happens to investors if GTII goes to zero? Is that a serious question? I don't know. Um, if it goes to zero in my case, then one of the largest positions in my account is worthless. That's what happens to me. I don't know what happens to you, I'm Echo. Um, the stock is currently at um, twenty five cents, twenty five seventy five. And uh, uh, I spent a lot of time last year, Emeco, last two or three months trying to explain a strategy, which was to sell the stock or, or other stocks, take a capital loss and wait 31 days to buy back so that you could establish the loss. In my case, 
if it goes to zero, I'll have tax losses. I won't have any capital to buy it back. But, you know, if it goes to zero, what happens to investors? They lose all their money. They will face a choice. Do I buy more if it's seller boxed or do I just get out? But it'll be a complete wipeout of an investment, I'm not, I'm, I'm really not sure whether that's a serious question or not, but I answered it. Thank you, Peter Sachs. I feel totally, I feel totally uh, overwrought. I feel flapped, flappable. B L F R. No, I haven't looked into it. B L F R. Blue fire. All I know is blue fire likes blue star. Well, I'll look into it. I like the industry. So Bob, I'll look into it. But I I don't like the stock price. But my feelings, Bob, on oil and gas, I don't understand what people are thinking about. The absolute idiocy that we're going to suddenly not be using oil and gas in 10 years that the Biden administration puts out. I don't know who's running that office. They all get in their big SUVs. They all fly to the Cayman Islands. They get on the beat, they drive in the beast, get on Air Force One. They launch wars in the Ukraine and they launch wars, well, not launch them, but back wars elsewhere. Tanks go into, tanks go into battle with support units and they all get like, Five gallons to the mile or some baloney. So I, I I really like oil and gas. And this is an equipment company, but it's pro buying, producing oil and gas assets. And I think that's the way to go. So I'll look into it, Bob. I don't have anything. I don't have anything uh, <laughs> really smart to say about it. but. Um, it's an area that I'd like to set up a company. I'd like to get some people investing in. I'd like to, um, I have all these investors overseas, but they won't look at oil and gas. So I wouldn't mind starting a company. I've got sources of deals that I trust. We've already missed out on what I think Frank Kristen did. There were deals. There was one deal I was trying to work on that got sold to somebody much like this, uh, it was 30, it, it was PV30, PV30. But it was some, a lot of the wells needed reworking. So there, I guess there's some risk in that, at least one of my buyers felt there was. But it was PV30 and you were paying PV30 for the production but there was development locations, there was exploration locations, and there was behind pipe. And oil was 30 bucks. I mean, but I, I really had, I, no one wanted to do it. <laughs> so it's nice for me to see it, but no one wanted to do it. All right, here's a novice. Um, can I explain how the short is trapped? Um,
Yeah, I can try. Theoretically, if there's a huge short position, theoretically, they're trapped. Um, in, in, an, in a world where you had compliance officers, where the other side demanded settlement, um, those open positions would be closed, and that's where they're trapped. But in a world where Gary Gensler looks the other way, where our Cromwell Cornwall looks the other way, where your broker looks the other way, where broker dealers look the other way, where market makers, you know, I don't think, um, It's possible that in GTII, just like every other uh, shorted stock out there, that they can carry these positions forever. Tamal, if the government and the regulators and Wall Street want to, and they've been able to do it for at least 15 years, they can hide these shorts, never cover. But if GTII, were to bring a deal in to increase value, if Alpine closes and therefore those positions have to be bought in, if the FBI, you know, there's all these ifs, then they're trapped. But I guess what you're really asking, look, Ham thinks there's 450 million shares counterfeit which don't exist. A senior financial investigator from the Amex, uh, retired, doesn't believe there's any shorts in GTII. There's no way. And if there are, it's small, 5 million. I don't know where he gets his thoughts from. He says, go look at the Novo list. That's the, when you open your account, you say you have no objection to the reporting of your ownership um, to the company. That's basically how I understand it to the transfer agent to, and then to the company. Because it, when you buy in your account, it's street name. Nobody can tell. Well, I don't, I don't really see how the, the Nobo list, I don't, if you're a criminal, are you going to, are you, are you even going to get involved in that? If you're, you're some of the pipes, from Germany and the UK, just selling endless amount of stock. Are you gonna Are you gonna report and show? I don't know. So Tamal, the issue is: Do you believe that there's a huge naked short or counterfeit short? or uh, not delivered position in GTII? Or do you think it's really small? I will tell you that the company now has a lot more stock issued than I were first got involved. But I think most of that stock is closely held and the people have no intention to sell. To the extent it's held by insiders, they can't sell. They can only sell 1% a month. So, and some of it may get redeemed as companies float. It's, so it's hard to break down. But they, my point is there's a lot of stock uh, outstanding compared to when I first got involved. But the ostensible naked short position has gone from 40 or 60 million, according to him, to over 400 million. So it's that's also grown. Um, if the gentleman at the Amex is correct, there's, there's very little short here. I don't buy it. I, you've heard me ask him many times. And the problem is the guy at the Amex thinks that the numbers that are reported 
only show tickets marked locate fail to locate or locate later uh not borrowed but we we'll, we can borrow it later and it doesn't show deliveries and it doesn't show the buying back of the same computers that day i find this preposterous how numbers can only show sales but they they somehow can't show the buyback i i find it mind blowing but it could be true could be true he's an honest guy smart and he's been in the business forever so tomorrow you have to make that choice yourself i choose to believe that there is a very large short position is it 450 million maybe it's only 100 million i don't know i that's one thing i think congress should demand of the sec full transparency Gensler brags about it. Well, provide it. Um, they are trapped in GTII if the trades are ever settled. Why would trades get settled? Because they have to deliver dividends. Because the regulators say you have to do it. Because Alpine goes down and they have to do it. Because finally, Wall Street gets fed up and says these are these are all fraudulent trades we got to clean it up on the other side of it there's this warehouse where they can go bury these trades forever there's going to be purchase of congress women and and the senators uh by the banks and then the banksters are going to say we're too big to fail And so the counterbalancing pressure is going to be don't close these trades. That happened, Tamal, in 2008. The whole reg show uh, legislation was a compromise in order to give time to Wall Street to settle the trades which were unsettled. They, they gave four tickets, buy, sell, sell with a legitimate locate or borrow or sell with a market maker exemption which you still had to deliver later or you still had to show that you located but in the in the flurry of trading i mean who could allow wall street to be in a position where they couldn't instantly and often and in the pell-mell of trading gtii they need to get instantaneous fills and they need the market maker to fill it's always down 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 but that's the exemption that congress put in but they clearly intended that the trades get settled what did wall street do they lied they got shady lawyers they counterfeited. They got these uh, death spiral notes. They took away, you know, it's so-called Merrill Lynch rule. Every branch does it, every firm. You can't buy stocks under five. They took away trading desks. They moved them out. They took away research, moved it out. They don't have the uptick anymore. They went to decimalization. They don't enforce the know your customer rule to name a few. So instead of Reg Show solving this, it just turned it into Niagara Falls. They turned a stream into Niagara Falls. So if the regulators continue to look the other way, if the head of NASDAQ collects her 28 million and looks the other way, if your brokers take the three cents, six cents a share in trading and look the other way, they're never going to cover the trades. But they are technically trapped because in the United States, we settle our trades. 
That's what separates us from other exchanges around the world. But guess what? Our journalism used to be honest. Our science used to be thorough. Our First Amendment rights used to be true. I mean, there's a lot of things that have changed. You're wrong, Spiny. You're wrong about that. Um, if you want to blame it on Russia, um, you just truncate it to the recent time. But Bill Clinton promised that we would not move NATO toward Moscow. I think George W. Bush, H. W. Bush also uh, followed in that, but we never, we never honored it. The Minsk Agreement, Germany. Uh, um, the only time Victoria Newland wasn't in office, I think, was under Trump. But we didn't honor that. We didn't honor that. And then we started, we interfered with the election. We, we removed, I can't pronounce his name, the president. And then we backed this actor. And we've done everything we can do to provoke a war with the Soviet Union because that's what Vic Victoria Newland and her new American century crowd want. I don't agree with you. Russia did not launch the war. It is true that he crossed into the Russian speaking areas. I can't pronounce those three uh, provinces, uh, Crimea, Odessa, that whole area. I wish he hadn't done that. But he made clear over and over again that that was, I hate that term, that was a red line. The Ukraine, the borderland could not join NATO. And we broke our promises, could not have weapons. We broke our promises. You know that the Ukraine is home of Nazis, you know that. We promised weapons and munitions. We're running out of munitions. The Russian army is now strong and focused. The economy is booming. We, we put sanctions on Russia. We don't speak to Putin anymore. We won't even talk to him. What kind of insanity is that? Putin had a, a peace plan with the Ukraine. Which, by the way, Ukraine may cease to exist by the time this is over. But Ukraine is never going back to the country it was in size or in economic power. It may not even have a port after this is done. But Putin made a peace offering. We rejected it. We goaded this. So I just disagree with you, Spiny. And I, I don't want to. I don't want to go on and on and on and expose that some of what I'm saying isn't exactly right. But in the broad sense, I think you're 100% wrong. I think we poked the bear on purpose. And uh, I think as long as Putin is in charge, the response by Putin has been measured. Everyone wants to get rid of Putin. That assumes that whoever comes in after him is going to be more reasonable than Putin. What if whoever comes in is worse? Then we get Victoria Newland's dream, war. I think I think Putin's been reasonably restrained. I've heard all the stories from friends that all the atrocities Russian soldiers have done. Um I don't know. I haven't seen pictures. But I assume people tell me it must be true. Russians must be subhuman. And the Ukrainian Nazis are saints. 
Where where does uh, Zelensky get all of his billions of dollars to buy homes around the world? I I, I you know what? I don't want to argue about it because it's it. I'm not going to convince you. But if you want to believe that you, the United States is innocent in the Ukraine, okay. If you think we can win in the Ukraine, okay. I'm suggesting to you the Ukraine, the Middle East, and soon China is going to change your life. That's all I'm suggesting. And what I'd like to see is over a period of time, we can make some profits and we I have only one thing I think you should buy, silver. And if if you can slowly get into a situation where not only can you buy silver, but you can buy some oil and, and gas income, income from good, stable companies or projects, to me, when the shit hits the fan, whatever oil is priced in now, let's use gasoline. Gasoline's trading for what? Four, four dollars a gallon. After the changes, after the war, after the panic, oil will sell in four seashells a gallon. But you'll be able to get that monetary value for your oil income. Same with silver and gold. You'll be able to get through the panic with something that has value in seashells instead of dollars because it's the these are the real assets. So I don't want to get in an argument about who started the idiot war in the Ukraine. All I know is we're losing it. It's exposing that the United States is not a superpower, a unipower, unipower. And we don't have the resources to fight it. And we're losing. And people are dying, more importantly, as we check our TikToks and bet on the Super Bowl. A whole generation of Ukrainian men have been slaughtered. But we armchair it from here because, Spiny, We've been lucky for a hundred years. War hasn't come to the continental United States. Well, we've opened up our border. And we'll see if any of those people are coming in to bring war. I don't, I hope not. I know that Joe Biden is doing his, his upright moral job of screening everyone. And he's got his his uh, uh, border czar Kamala Harris helping him, but this time it may be that some of the attack comes home because there are weapons that are pretty damn powerful, while we squandered our resources under the Popinjay president, George W. Bush, bombing deserts, assaulting mountains, spending trillions of dollars, killing people, maiming people, and having our young people hurt and killed. All for the new American century. Just look at Donald Rumsfeld licking his comb before he comb, combs his hair. The new American century. The one thing we got out of it was a magnificent airport in Afghanistan. Biden gave that away and all the equipment. We had Iraq. Well, the oil's going to the Russians and the and the either the Japanese or the German or the Italian. I can't remember now, but it's not going to us. <laughs> And there's only two countries on the list. If you want to Google uh, General Wesley Clark, he did a speech about it. 
seven countries to my memory that that uh, Robert Kagan, <clears throat> Victoria Newland's husband, and Donald Rumsfeld, George W., Condoleezza Rice, wanted to go after and invade and spread democracy. There's only two countries on that list. There's only one on the list that we haven't done yet. It's Iran. And then there's Russia. Then there's Russia. And so we're going back to the Cold War thinking. <laughs> because apparently some overweight guys in the basement did some ads on Facebook pro-Trump. <clears throat> and therefore Hillary lost the election. But hey. Don't, you know, she can question an election. But um, I don't want to question any election. All of our elections are democracy. So my point, Spiney, uh, I'm not going to agree with you. This was an, uh, this was, um, an unnecessary war. The peace that Putin offered to us, the agreements we made, that we that we reneged on would have left half a billion casualties uh, sorry half a million casualties alive and would have left Ukraine as a neutral country without dispute The Ukraine was once Poland. The Ukraine was once the Soviet Union. The Ukraine has moved, there's borders moving back and forth. But ultimately, the Ukraine is a buffer to Moscow, Muscovy, because there's no natural barrier like an ocean. So it's totally reasonable. There's at least two or three invasions I can remember from my history that went through there. So it's a matter of geography that a guy running the, the Russia would say, you know what? I don't want NATO troops there. So who really stuck the knife in first? It's interesting, but it's not relevant to the fact and I think it is a fact that because of further squandering of our strength to make the military industrial complex wealthy, and for people to have your point of view because you watch mainstream media, it puts us up that our lifestyles are going to change and your financial situation is going to be in trouble. Now, you can assume that the United States is going to continue as a wealthy country and we're going to be able to spread our power around the world. But it's just not a fact anymore. It's just not a fact anymore. The sooner we recognize it, each of us individually can make some steps to get out of the debt-based system, to treat our own financial house as a central bank would, and start thinking critically. There is no reason that we should be back in a Cold War with Russia. There is no reason why we had to make Putin our enemy. Hillary lost the election. Get over it. The dossier was fraudulent. But what we've done, what we've done, um, what we've done, uh, Spiney, is we made Russia stronger. Kissinger played China against Russia. But now we've we've pushed China and Russia together. We've made Russia closer to Iran. Russia with the 
oil that we used to have, Russia's going to have an American century. It's going to supply the energy to the powerhouse of China, India, Southeast Asia, while we sit back and say, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Ukraine started that war and we better be spending hundreds of billions of dollars a year and, and we better be sending our equipment there. I'm pretty sure the Palestinians uh, uh, started genocide in Israel and we better join in there. I'm pretty sure that the Chinese uh, uh, don't have a right to Taiwan and uh, we better fight there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to sit in our armchair and we're just going to believe the media. I, you know, I don't, I, I, it's hopeless. You're not seeing spiny what I'm trying to, yes, I push it through dramatically maybe, but your effing life is about to change. Mine too. We consume 25 to 30% of the world's resources. We have 4% of the population. We spread our asinine uh, uh, feminist agenda around the world in countries that don't want it. We, spe we spread our, our uh, uh, what do you call it, capitalism, free markets, which aren't free and aren't capitalistic anymore, to countries that don't want it. We back it up with our military. We've got something like, uh, I can't remember, 400 four-star generals. Maybe it's not that many. In World War II, we had like three. We have a massively bloated military. While, while Russia has created the hypersonic missile, they can take out our aircraft carriers, reportedly. They have a, a, I forget their system, they can shoot 20 or 40 missiles all at once, high speed. They can take out cruise missiles, tanks, jets, and other missiles, jeeps, all at once. We don't have anything to combat it. But we can sit back and say, well, I think Ukraine started that. We provoked Ukraine. Well, you, you're saying Russia. I guess I'm saying Ukraine started it. It didn't have that's a war that did not have to it didn't have to be. It just didn't have to be. And now, Spiny, you've got Ukrainians and Russians that won't be able to live together for generations while we sit back and enjoy our life. And my point is, we are, and it's not a Republican Democratic thing. We are now hated around the world. And the, the, the economic South is joining with the Soviet Union and People's Republic of China and India and Iran and now Saudi Arabia and, and, and swaths of Africa and uh, Southeast Asia and South America. And we can, you and I can argue, well, it was Russia started it. At the end of the day, the Ukrainian war is proving to the world that our leadership is feckless, that our ability to supply arms is really limited, and that our promises shatter like glass dropped on a concrete floor. Our promises are worthless. Ukraine is no longer on the masthead of Washington Post or New York Times. My opinion, we're ready. We want war with Iran so we can spend trillions to bail out the banks and make the men out in Reston, men and women out in Reston and surrounding the suburbs of, the, of Washington, D.C., wealthy. But I'm pretty sure Russia started it. Okay. All right, you win. Russia started it.
Where does it leave us? It still leaves us with the same problem. How are you and your family going to survive in the new world? Anything hand picks, it all goes down hard. That's not a bad point, Sheikh Farhad. It's not a bad point. It seems like everything they uh, everything that we talk about, they hit. Um, Ham doesn't talk about logic. <laughs> he doesn't talk about C-A-U-D. He also doesn't talk about um, uh, well, I guess that's not true. I guess he does talk about it. I was going to say he doesn't talk about GDC, but that's at 260. I mean, he doesn't really talk about it. He he says he bought some. He died very little. I bought a very little myself. He, he knows some of the sketch of what might happen, but that might be one, shake, which avoids what you're talking about. But you make a good point. Russia is not toothless. It's not toothless. It it it's uh, not toothless at all. Um, I think Russia's economy is now bigger than Germany's. It has energy. It has the contracts. It doesn't have significant debt. The um, the sanctions we put on the ruble has accelerated the development of IBAN and other alternative uh, uh, settlement systems outside of the SWIFT settlement system. It has accelerated the move around the world away from the dollar. And that move is, is in large part happening out of just, we don't want to do business with the dollar. Um, Putin has been buying gold. I think Putin and producing gold. I think Putin, um, uh, no, I don't have, a, nothing's coming to my memory about the size of the Russian gold reserve, but it's large. There's rumors we don't have the gold we, that we hypothecated and rehypothecated our gold. Um, Russia factories are booming, producing munitions. The Russian army has now has an esprit de corps. Uh, countries around the world want to purchase Russia, the new advanced Russian weapons. Russia has an educated populace. God is back in Russia. The church is back. Now, Russia still has a problem with vodka, vodka. It still has a problem with AIDS. It still has a problem with uh, drugs. But no, Russia has has an honest press. Believe I can't believe I'm saying that. But Russia has an honest press. I don't agree with you. I think Russia is a formidable economy, and I think it should be our friend. I, I, it's inexcusable that Russia is not our friend. This is because a petulant woman ran a shitty campaign. And when she lost, she blamed it on Russia. And she started Russia, Russia, Russia. And then a woman that's now at the State Department, Victoria Newland, and a couple of women at the White House, Samantha Power, and uh, uh, there's one other. And then maybe even uh, Condoleezza Rice, they're pushing for war with Russia. Why the hell would we even do that?
Wow, Jeff Khan. Jeff Khan, you're the you're the smart con. Jeff Khan. Jeff Khan. Jeff Khan, I think you should take over this call. You win the prize. I should have a prize. Um, now I have to give Billy Ray Valentine credit, but now I have to give Jeff Kahn credit. You're 100% correct. I, I did a video on HNRA. They have, they have proved producing assets that have an independent valuation of 440 or 430, no, whatever. Let's call it 440 million PV10, present value. So they've already discounted it for the economic life. Their debt is like 28 million, but then they have a line of credit for I can't remember, 30 or 40 million. Let's just take 100 million off of that for debt. And then you divide it by the outstanding shares of approximately 7.5 million. You get $45 a share in, in value. Now, it'll take two to three years to grow into full production and there's some volatility in oil prices and i don't know the cap tables three years from now so instead of 45 let's divide that by three and only take a third of that number a third of it let's leave two thirds off the table I think Jeff Kahn, that stock should trade for $15 and you can buy it for two bucks right now. And now that you put in that it has 153 institutional ownership, that's the same situation that Ham was calling out on, on GME and AMC. Jeff Kahn, you are my hero. I wish I owned the stock. I mean, I'm I'm uh, committed in other areas, but uh, I think HNRA is highly pounceable. Highly pounceable. Highly pounceable. It has news. Let me look. Spiny, the Ukrainian army is women and 70-year-old men and young boys with no training. So, Spiny, this is, I, with all respect, because you're, uh, you're a good financial guy, but with all respect, you haven't done your research. So, if you want to believe CNN, I find it hard to have a conversation with someone who gets their news from CNN. Wow, CJYL is down. Doesn't mean it's out. CB, you know that a collie down, a collie down is not a collie out. Of course, you probably don't remember that. I don't either. It's something my mother used to say to me. It's what Lassie used to say in their show. All right, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Oh, a great website. And so the news is about a new website. Here's how I think about HNRA, CB, and I've never talked to the CEO, and if I'm missing something, I'm missing something. Um, I showed the chart on my video, and I don't think I have it here. Oh, well, maybe that's it. 
anyway, this is the logic chart where, I mean, uh, no, that's logic. I don't have C-A-U-D. Anyway, let me see if I have it here to show you. I don't have it in front of me. Point is, after it de the shorts, the criminals drove it down because that's what they do. It's all they do. It's all they know how to do. But I think in the case of HNRA, what the hell are they thinking? They, HNRA doesn't need to go raise money. HNRA doesn't need to acquire anybody. HNRA doesn't need cash, as far as I can tell. They're, make, they're making uh, cash flow every month. And they can execute their growth plan out of cash flow and a line of credit. They don't need the criminals. So this is going to snap back like a some bitch, in my opinion. Yeah, John Titus. Yep. Um, that that was a video. That wasn't a. I, I I wasn't on the phone with him or anything. But he is good. He is good. Um, Narad Wells, if you trade silver, trade it. But. Um, if you want to buy silver in your account, uh, I would buy the Sprott Physical Silver Trust, and it's eight bucks. The problem with owning it in your account, even that asset, is if the financial system collapses, you're going to have to sue your brokerage firm to get that value. Now, that may not happen. It may be that the value of those assets are offset by declining values, and you'll be able to liquidate for cash in the future. But no, I wouldn't trade SVM, uh, although you can. Uh, it's not where I would start. I would start, if you want to do it in your account, P, -S -P physical. SLV, silver, PSLV. That's where I would start. Um, once silver goes up in price, we'll have to start looking at mining stocks, but maybe some mining stocks make sense. But if you do not have a silver position yet, that's where I would start is PSLV. Um, if you don't have silver at home, I wouldn't have a lot because it's really heavy, but I might start with junk silver because that'll give you flexibility. If you need to fill up, fill your tank, you can give silver dimes. But I wouldn't go overboard with that. I, I believe that dollar bills and $5 bills will have some sort of bartering value. Um, but don't open, if you buy that silver, don't open the packages because if if there's a spike in silver and you want to sell it, um, you have to send it back to the seller. And if it's unopened, they can process it very quickly. If it's open, it, it, it could delay your ability to sell. Um, the second thing I would buy as an American, and, and you can get more creative and better, I would just buy uh, silver uh, dollars, silver dollars in the United States. My, um, I think the, the two or three places I would go to that is Mike Mahoney's site, Gold Silver, Apmex, A-P-E-X. And I like the doc. I'm having a hard time remembering the name of his website, but the doc is good too. Um, I'll think my brain's not working. But um, 
of those three, if you haven't bought your original position, I think the combination of education, the combination of what I've grown to believe in as integrity, and what used to be, what used to be, I don't know if it's changed, but Mike Mahoney, if you purchased US silver dollars, those are US currency. So buying and selling them, buying them doesn't require, require, or at least it didn't used to require reporting. So that's where I would start. I don't, John, the div, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about the dividends. I, it's, it's just too, by the time I'm finished talking about it, I feel like I'm talking to, uh, I, I've, I've lost all my brain. But John, the reason for issuing a special dividend that has to go through the transfer agent is to cause the back office's trouble in terms of delivering the dividend. Why? So they have to go buy, they have to go settle the trades. The stock in your account that you think is in your account is just an electronic entry. It's not real shares, as evidenced by the fact that they can't give you your dividend. If your shares were real in your account, they would have the dividend to give you. They don't have it. So the shares in your account are not real. By all likelihood. So the purpose of these effing dividends, I wish they had never issued them. No one gets it. But the purpose of the dividends is to get your broker to go out and close your, call the prime broker and say, hey, you never delivered John Waddell's GTII, we want, we're, if you don't deliver it, we're going to buy you in. This whole point hasn't happened yet. It may never happen. It may never happen. My, my dividends haven't been delivered. It's exposing the system, but hey, but hey, Ham already talked. Uh, what about finger? I think there's news coming this week, maybe tomorrow. I think there's new earnings coming this week, maybe Friday. Univest still in, how many customers do they have? I'm not going to talk about Univest with finger. Uh, there was a uh, shelf registration that mentioned Univest, but, but it hasn't been 120 days. Yet it was September 11th. I don't know if Univest is involved in something, not involved, if they even care. I'm sure Univest has a lot of deals they can look at. So uh, uh, I have absolutely no idea what's going on with Univest. All I can tell you, it's clear Univest hasn't done anything yet with Finger. But it doesn't mean something might be happening, but something might not happen. Nobody knows. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, yeah, serenity now, serenity now. Um, um, the, the SVM, let me just get a price in my head on that. Um, Narad, I'll try to look that up. I mean, it's a silver stock and maybe it has something going for it. Um, there are, Rick Rule has about seven silver stocks, which I want to study. Um, and there, and the one, there's a royalty stock, it's called Silver Wheaton. That makes sense. 
uh, but to establish the hedge of silver, I think physical, you, you have to own physical first, but there'll be money made in silver stocks. And I'm hoping in silver, gold, and oil and gas stocks, and I'd like to move away from stocks that have a contract. Oh, we have a contract. You know, I'd, I'd like to move away from that and get into real assets. I wish I could buy more finger. I wish I could buy more finger. I think there'll be news tomorrow and I think there'll be earnings on Friday. I think there's a lot of ways for them to cheat and that's what they're doing. Time is what they're buying. Time is their friend. Um, I don't know what's going on with MMTLP. MMTLP can change overnight from my dire prediction to, um, I mean, if you if that letter from a hundred, almost a hundred Congress people goes to the SEC, and then twenty five senators join in, and then maybe thirty governors, and then it gets on the front page of. Uh, uh, a news source that Democrats read. Democrats don't listen to Fox or Newsmax or right-wing broadcasting or anything that conservatives watch, Democrats don't pay attention to. So that's out. Um, on the other hand, Republicans don't, conservatives don't really listen to the mainstream media, but they might look at the front page of the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, uh, Washington Post. Uh, so those might be sources, but maybe the place where it has to come out is, I, I can't think, Wash Wall Street Journal maybe, uh, maybe Barron's. Um, but anyway, if the news coalesced and it got publicity, which the Democrats read, I think you could get a settlement much, much more quickly than uh, than a year. But I think it's going to take a year. I don't see any reason why MMTLP is going to settle sooner. I don't know. I, Jeff, I don't know what to say to that. I, I think Putin is a good president for his country. I think he's looking out for his country. Jeff Kahn, I really think that's a great opinion. I've got, in my mind, I'm gonna end in six minutes. Yeah, I like John Titus. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, Sam Haynes, um, it can get cheaper, but one thing about GTII I've noticed, um, if the whales come in again, which they could, if if there is a snapback, you could get GTII could be 75 cents in a heartbeat. That's when you start saying, well, it's going up. Do I lighten up then? Or do if it's if it if it goes to a dollar fifty or two fifty. I agree with you. I'm not saying you're right. Um, but our emotions and our sentiment is it's down. When it's down this low, what it does to my head, not my emotions, I go, I should have sold it higher. I could be buying it back now. So then that leads me to think, well, should I be buying more now? Right now, I would rather buy logic and, and, um, 
HNRC. I'd like to buy this HNRA looks pounceful. Um, finger. I, I would like to take the chance, Sam, of making a big profit in, in, in another stock and being able to come back and buying more GTII. But um, that runs the risk that it can snap back at any time. It is cheap. But just because it's cheap doesn't mean it can't get cheaper. And that's the hard, that's the hard uh, lesson. Um, out of December, I, would, I, I don't know how many. This is 15 different stocks we've talked about. Um, looking at stocks that could have a January rally after year-end tax loss selling, it the strongest stocks out there none of them are really strong yet none of them are really strong yet but we'll see what happens with finger if there's some news coming or if there's good earnings um logic i don't think you have to wait much longer let's just look at some of the prices um GDC up 10 cents, GTII 26 cents, a lot of volume. One thing, Sam, that you look for, and that could be today, you look for a, um, uh, it's not called climatic reversal. You look for a, um, ah, I can't remember the term, but it's a, key reversal, but there's another term for it. But you look for all this selling that just happens and then it's done. And then you get a, a big run back. I think there'll be a bounce back, but they could walk it down further. Um CAUD is 130. MULN is uh, 1491. Um, I want to look at logic LGIQ. Logic is five and a half cents. I, I Sam, if I were looking to buy something right now, logic at five and a half cents, I just cannot see why. It's a shell. It's a shell. It has no real management. It has Brent running it, but it doesn't have a business. It doesn't need money. It, it doesn't need to go back to the criminals. And um, we already approved as shareholders, we already approved as shareholders um, a one for 50 split or one for 35. But I think odds are they'll do one for 50 reverse split, which they're not going to do in advance. They'll do once a deal's done. So then with logic, Sam, uh, what's the value of a shell? I mean, GTII right now, in a lot of ways, is a shell. It has a value, and it also might have a huge short position. That's a strength and a weakness. What is the value of a shell? Well, the, the criminals have obviously said to themselves that logic as a shell is worth virtually nothing. But look, it's come up there. I think it's, it's bouncing off of that 50-day uh, 50, 50 uh, moving average, and it could have a breakout. And it, it seems to me it's totally normal pullback. But anyway, why would a company buy a shell? 
They want to monetize. They want the IPO market is closed. They want access to the markets. Two, they want to go public, so to speak, without months and months and months of approval process, SEC delay, the cost of finding an investment banker, all the machinations of the corrupt Wall Street placement agents. Uh, three, uh, they see an opportunity to launch on, already on a on a you know they think a better exchange, Nasdaq NYSE. It's debatable after we see what's happened. So, um, what enhances the value of a shell that a company might be looking at? Is is it current in its filings? Yes, in this case. Is it essentially perfect in its filings? I mean, is it there's no red marks, there's no nothing bad? Yes, it is a creme de la creme uh shell. And does the shell have a lot of it, uh shareholders? Yes, it does. So what, Sam, what Brent said on a couple of calls here on Logic, he said that th this is six weeks, seven weeks ago and about four weeks ago, two different calls. He said that Logic was receiving overtures from multiple companies want, wishing to go public by doing a reverse merger. The IPO market is quiet and, and he has seen multiple companies. Now, to my memory, he said the size of those companies were 600 million, 700 million, 800 million and larger. And it wasn't just three, it was many that he was screening. So the other day I did a video and I assumed that the, the buyer of the shell, the reverse merger candidate, had a value of $650 million. And further, if you assume we, as Logic shareholders, we get an eighth, an eighth of that, divided by the float in logic right now the total outstanding shares 144 million it works out to 55 cents a share well sam that's just arithmetic there's no debating that there's no there there's not there's there's no misstep there the the only the only i guess two or three things that could change this one if the valuation is lower than this but then maybe the percentage we get is 15% but anyway that might be but he's got more than one company why would he choose one with a lower valuation so i think it's a reasonable target the second thing that might be a risk is that when you hear the valuation, you go, wait a minute, that doesn't add up. That looks like bullshit valuation. That I suppose, I suppose that's always a risk. But again, there's more than one sutor. So why would he choose a company that has a valuation which you can you could look sideways at? And I I suppose. The other risk, which I don't think they're going to do, but it's possible, is if he does, instead of a reverse merger, if he just continues logic as an ongoing company and brings in a new co to just continue the existence of logic, I would say there'd be some risk if logic needs... <coughs> 
to raise money, if they go back to the criminals, if, if the reverse split goes in, then the criminals might sell it down. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Brent wants to sell logic to a buyer, kit caboodle, it's the whole thing, we're done. It's the best answer for you and me, too. And, you know, Brent owns a lot of the stock. So anyway, that's that's 55 cents a share. The stock's trading for five cents. I don't know. Actually, it's five and a half cents. So that's 10x, isn't it? If it's trading at five and a half cents and it can go to 55 cents, isn't that 10x? That's pretty pounceable, Sam, to me. Now, it's not a it's not a squeeze to the moon that could happen in a short squeeze. But I went on to do this arithmetic. If you if you if you um, assume that the stock split goes in one for fifty, which will happen at the time of the reverse merger, not before. If it happens before, that just means you'll be able to buy stock cheaper. So that means that there would be 2.9 2 million shares of the buying company for us. For us. Because we have 144 million Divide that by 50. Then I'm assuming we get an eight. So you have to multiply that by eight to find out how many outstanding shares there are in the, the buyer co. I don't know who it is. Um, call it Kinko's. Maybe FedEx is going to sell Kinko's off. So Kinko's comes in, buys us, and we get an eighth, they get seven eighths. So there's 23 million shares outstanding. If it is a 650 million uh, uh, market cap company, which has revenue, which has cash on its books, then you take 650, you divide it by the 23 million shares and you get $28 per share for logic. And that is an NYSE stock. NYSE stock. Now, that's not $28 to our interest. That's equivalent to $0.56 cents a share to our interest. But what it means is instead of being an over-the-counter stock that can be manipulated, You've got a $25, $30 stock on the New York Stock Exchange, maybe NASDAQ, where institutions can buy it, do their own research, and it's got revenue and cash. I don't know what the... Anyway, so Sam, I like the logic story. Um, I could I could tell you HNRC and all that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do five more minutes and I'm going to hang up. Uh, Sam, I assume Univest is not interested, not involved in Finger. How's that? Yeah, that might be. It's pretty estranged. <laughs> it's pretty estranged now. Thank you, VO. Well, Frank, I think the markets are rigged. I think they've accelerated the destruction. And it happens to the blindness of Adiana Friedman, uh, Cuthbert Coleman, whatever his name is, uh, Robert Cook, Gary Gensler, couldn't care could not care. Just as long as they get their lucre, they're happy.
All right, I'm gonna go to the bottom and go back to the top. Yeah, that's it. Uh, not legal advice is correct. 650 passengers for a plane with 179. I think I, I exaggerated uh, the number a little bit. I think not legal advice is correct. So, all right, I, I accept that, that I was wrong. All right, so not legal advice has a different idea. And I haven't figured it out. That's great. I, I Not legal advice. If I could move it, I personally would. Yeah, I think that's that's good advice, even though it's not legal. All right, I'm going to go to the bottom. Another day, another day that I feel like I overreacted. Anyway, I just have to keep going. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, I've got dinner later. I've got to set that up. I've got to go walk lucky. And I've I've got to get a shave and a haircut. Two bits. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's a quid 85. I don't know what the struggling to live. Yeah, I I would say that we we're, we're all struggling to live. Um uh, I'm struggling to maintain a general level of being happy and easygoing. I don't have it anymore. Um yeah, let me come right back to that. Um, uh, it depends on what bread you're buying. If you're buying the crap white bread, it's anywhere from uh, 239 to 350. If you're buying a little bit better, it's maybe three fifty four dollars, and if you buy really good bread, you're paying eight nine dollars a loaf. Yeah, the Isle of Man. There you go, Jay Roach. You're exactly right. Uh, paper silver is highly manipulated. Um, let me go down to this gentleman's question and then tin. I think tin is uh, it is aluminium and uh, boxel. I can't remember what tin is made of. My dad actually, um, when he was an economics officer, I remember going to his office at the State Department, and it, that was one of his things he had to cover was tin. Um, but I, I, I don't think tin, I don't know enough about tin. I mean, if we go to war or something, maybe, but I think tin is down the chain after you establish a position in some other metals, maybe you can go into tin. I'll try to look into it, but my initial reaction is nah. Um, silver is, I don't know the ratio right now, um, but last year the ratio got to as high as 120 to one in price for an ounce versus an ounce of gold. Um, that's way out of whack. I had to look it up. And historically, and I think, um, uh, what's that scientist? Isaac Newton, I think. I think he ran some 
government office in the UK, but back when the United Kingdom was the world power and set uh, prices, I think he picked one to 15.5 for the ratio of gold to silver. And that held steady for maybe 100 years or more. Um, the ratio of silver to gold that I've always heard about is one for 16, one for 16. It has been 120 for one. I don't know where it is now. Probably, I'm, if I had to guess, I would say it's not 100 to one, maybe 90 to one. Uh, gold is up. Gold is up. Now, I think the price of silver is going to be contingent initially on what happens to gold. And I think gold's going to break out. Um, they're going to fight to keep it down. Um, I hope it takes a while to break out. I hope they keep it down for a while so we can establish a position. Um, gold, I think, is price could be anything in the in the uh, uh, gold could be anything in the um, Um, just somebody bugging me, bugging me, bugging me, bugging me to call somebody. How can I do that while I'm live? Um, I, you know, what gold does in the short run, medium run, I have no idea. It's anybody's guess. But I think gold, uh, depending on who you listen to, will go to $10,000 an ounce or $40,000 an ounce. Or if you really want to hear one guy, it goes to $100,000 an ounce. But that fairness, that's not all wealth. That's not all wealth. That's a decline in the dollar's value as well. So just don't get all excited. This is about preserving something as much as it is about making money. But anyway, so what that means for silver, I'll just use the 10,000 the $10,000 target. The reason I'll use that one, that the last time I read and listened to Jim Rickards, that is the number that if we assume that we do have the gold we say we do at Fort Knox and under, under Manhattan, if we revalued gold, we could sort of rebalance our financial outlook by repricing gold at $10,000 an ounce. So that's one uh, really smart guy that's been in war simulations He's done, done his analysis. I've read all four or five of his books. I don't know if my memory is confusing some of the numbers, but his basic concept is, is that we are going to revalue gold. That's our way out. So, like I say, that assumes we have the world's largest position of gold, eight, eight, 0.25 million tons, a uh, thousand tons, 8.5 times, whatever it is. I'm not sure we do, but assuming we do. So let's say it goes to 10,000. If gold is currently, it's not, but I'm it, just because it's easy arithmetic. If gold is trading 
at one ounce of gold for 100 ounces of silver. That's not happening right now. That implies that silver would trade if if gold were 10,000. Silver would trade at, I think, $200. Let me just do that. No, maybe maybe a hundred dollars. Sorry, sorry. So ten thousand dollar, ten thousand uh, dollar gold at hundred to one would be a hundred dollars silver. Hundred dollars silver. I think that's a minimum of where silver goes. I'm not talking tomorrow. I'm talking steadily build the position. Now, if silver were to I, silver, I think actually right now. It's basically trading at $23 to gold at 2000 um, It's around 86, 85 to one. So if you take 10,000, let's call it 85. Um, Silver would go to 117, and that's an if if the ratio, let's call it 120, if the ratio stayed constant and gold were revalued to 10,000. Now, what I think, I think gold is going to go a lot higher than 10,000, but let's just leave it there. Um, if silver were to go back to the classic ratio, of basically 16 to 1, 15.5, 16 to 1. One ounce of gold for every 16 ounces of silver in value. Silver would go to $625. That term classic ratio is one that David Morgan uh, uh, created. Now, why would silver go that high? Well, so we used to have a stockpile of silver in the United States and above ground and maybe around the world, but we had extra silver in the world. That's not there anymore. Silver's price is completely manipulated, just like every stock you're invested in. It's J.P. Morgan, and I think her name was Blythe Masterson. I think that Blythe is definitely her first name. And now Jamie Diamond has it. Diamond has it. But it's complete, silver's price is completely manipulated. But what's different about silver than gold? Gold is a monetary asset, basically. It has minor, minor industrial uses. Silver has uses as jewelry, as med for medical reasons, for for uh, uh, military, uh, it also has uh, other industrial uses, and I feel like I'm le leaving one out. But anyway, silver has demand beyond monetary demand, but beyond uh, oh, I know what it is. It's silverware of all things, silverware. But but silver also has the mint, just like gold has the mint. I, to my memory, it's like 60, 40. 60% 60 goes to demand for the mints and 40% to the other uses, something like that. Anyway, silver primarily is targeted for mining as you mine for gold and other metals, silver is a side, it's a side issue. It's a byproduct. So that's how we've treated silver. But why silver, the ratio could change is to, as particularly in the West, if we start buying gold and silver, if gold starts becoming $10,000, It's just like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's $47,000. So people are looking at XRP. 
the human mind will say, you know, I can only buy one ounce of gold, but instead I could buy a lot of silver. That's why. It, it'll be the cheaper monetary cousin to gold. But it's interesting about silver. It's plentiful, maybe, maybe, as compared to gold. But we throw it away, too. It's in our phones when we throw the phone away. It's in our, it's in our medicines. Obviously, we throw that away. So, so um, here, Ham is calling. Hello? Not much, dude. I'm just, I'm, at, I'm winding up, and then I'm going to go walk my dog. Sure, sure, you can go on. I might have to, I have to get the speaker back hooked up. Battery 90%. Connected to Bill's iPhone. Okay, found. let's see. All right, there it is. Um, you are connected. All right, everybody, I'm back. I'm working all day, and uh, there's a lot of crazy things going on, and I haven't heard anything negative on both names. All right, so this has just been a, uh, a bullshit attack. The volume was explosive all morning while we were on the call and has died down to a trickle now. The odd numbers are still on the bid and the offer, those 2650, or 2780, whatever the hell those numbers are. I believe a lot of the trades were wash trades, and I do believe there's been a lot of naked short selling again, and people are sucking it up. I spoke with Aces. He knows people are bought size. I know people are bought size. They tried everything to break it. I do believe that they're trying to hold this one down because they know finger motion's coming out with good news. We all kind of think they're coming out with good news. So before finger motion comes out with good news and starts to take off, they're trying to break TTII and try to cover. They're trying to they're trying to get people to dump positions and show that it's not working. That's what I believe. I don't have any facts on that, but after trading and watching this stuff for a long time, that's what they do. They're trying to drive the stocks down because when finger motion, when it does come out with good news, if it started at six, it could be eleven. Starting at three and a half, it goes to seven. And we all think that we all win is because the stock went up four points. Four, four from seven is 11. Four from here is seven. And that's the mentality of the naked short. Drive it down. So when it rallies, we all say, oh, the stock rallied back up 100%. You should take profits. That's the mentality of the short sellers. And if you ever see stocks that were big shorted stocks, you know, that got knocked down to two from 20. And you'll see the story. I can guarantee it. You'll see the story stock up 100% on news of this, but it's down 150%, you know, 200%. And yet they market this. The reporters always write a story. It's up 100% or 80% on the day. That's the mentality. They do that all the time. All right. So I haven't heard anything negative. As a matter of fact, I heard the opposite, all good things, but I can't put my handle on, uh, you know, or finger on what the good news is, but everyone is very confident on all fronts. That's all I can tell you. I don't know what that means, but you know what I've heard. That's it. Anything else, William? Anybody? You, you guys can't, been on for a you can't time? put your finger on finger. Well, there were some questions. What if, what happens to investors if GTII goes to zero? I tried to answer but that. But you worry about that with you. Call me that next. next and question. then, uh, I can't. And then there were some questions if anything's coming for Finger. I said earnings are coming, and and uh, um, I don't know. That was about it. I didn't. I didn't hear any difficult questions. Well, I've always felt Finger has tremendous fundamental value. They're not going away, and just remember. Univest and the company signed to put a big, uh, what was it, S3 filing out about a big money raise. They didn't do that for shits and giggles, as William would say, right? They didn't. And um, on the other hand, I, I think it's a mistake to just hang every breath on Univest. They'll do something when they do it, if they do. I, I agree. But I think that, you know, our, we're all taking our eye off the ball. 
And like I said, they did uh, filing for a reason. Let's see what happens from that. The company's fundamentals are coming out. We all know the earnings. If the, if the trend is our friend, go back and look at the company just keeps getting stronger and stronger. It's financially secure. When you're financially secure, you, the devils can't control you forever. They they stop. They the stock gets the stock went positive for two minutes before when I was on a call, and they try to push it right back down again to keep it red. They got to keep it red. All right, that's. Uh, I have to take this call. I got to go. It's the consultant. I got to go. All right, bye. All right. All right. I was going to ask him the one about how the shorts are trapped. I'll try to remember that before. But fairness, let me just finish on that. So I just gave you a range of between $100 and $600. But I think, I think, um, uh, I, I just, I, I don't know how, excuse me a minute. God, sorry, I'm, I, I need a wife. Um, uh, uh, Um, all right, sorry, I, I got distracted. So fairness, I, I think silver um, as an ultimate target, I gave you $100, I gave you $600. My opinion, my opinion on silver is it will go to par. It will go one for one with gold one for one with a gold. And I think you could buy, you could sell, you know, in other words, one ounce of silver will be worth one ounce of gold. I think I'm in a minority on that, but I'm talking about in emotional panic, in, in fairness when everyone on the street is talking to you about silver the way they talk to you about bitcoin i think it'll go to one to one now that's if that's if gold stops at 10000 this guy who i used to subscribe to his letter and i read all of his books dr stephen lead i let me see if he's got the projection i read this book but it's so long ago um uh and if i can't find it quickly um let me see if it's in the back anyway his projection on gold that i remember Uh, sorry, fairness. I can't. I can't find it. Anyway, his projection on gold was forty thousand an ounce. Forty thousand dollars an ounce. There is there is one guy that I read, 
there are some women, but it was mostly men um, that said $100,000 an ounce. But, but fairness, one of the things I want you to start thinking about is the dollar is shit. <laughs> it, look, I'm not one that believes the dollar is going to go straight down. I don't think there is a market out there that competes with the dollar. There isn't one. So I don't think the dollar is going to disappear right away. I'm hopeful that our next president can undo the damage that this administration has done. I don't know who that person would be. Uh, I've given you my view that I think Biden is going to go through to the Democratic nomination, and then the superdelegates will pick someone else who I think will be Hillary Clinton, and I think she will be Trump in the election, one of the fairest elections and most transparent elections you've ever seen. But this Epstein stuff maybe maybe will have an impact. I don't know. But I think Hillary could run uh, a foreign policy uh, that, well, I don't know. Hopefully it's a little less... feckless than this president's, but I don't know. Hopefully we can show some strength around the world. My biggest plea to America and my biggest hope is that we can get back to our ideals, which is why the rest of the world respects us and maybe even loves us, not our military power. Because frankly, our military power isn't that great anymore. It's not as strong as what people think it is. It's still going to be <laughs> pretty damn big, but it's not. We're not the unit power anymore. And I don't think we need to be. But if we can stick with our ideas of individuals, of, of education, of kindness to others, of accepting people in our country and, and hard work, merit, manufacturing, and uh, twerking, whatever twerking is, you know, trend setting. I think people, we will still be an extraordinarily wealthy country in the world. But, um, There is a risk, of course, that the dollar has some sort of collapse. I don't see that. I also don't see a collapse in the stock market anytime soon. I think the market's going to go roaring to new highs. Um, we can get our credibility back. We can, we can be a fair partner to all countries around the world. But... We're, there's going to be some apologies we have to make. There's going to have to be some uh, uh, changes in our latitude and our attitude if we're going to get there. But I think we can get there. But anyway, regardless, the future doesn't look good for the entire world in terms of fiat currencies and debt. The world is a closed system. The earth is a closed system. And compounding of interest and piling on debt and this idea of growth the way we have it now is not sustainable in a closed system. It's just not sustainable. And that's showing up in the destruction of the planet by nuclear, nuclear power which is not sustainable, and it might be too late. And this, this need to reestablish the United States on suburbia and highways and the 1960s, 50s, we're not going to be able to go there either. We have to learn to live where we live, maybe have highways for... Uh, long distance trips, 
But when we live, we walk, park your car, and maybe have rail, boats. But it's it's going to be a different world. But it'll be a wealthy world. But to get there, the price of oil, the price of gas, the price of of uh, precious metals, copper, are in dollar terms, in real terms, in real terms, are going to go to the moon. And that, and I think we'll have a chance, uh, fairness, to make to change. All I'm talking about is being fiscally independent, fiscally secure. That's all I'm talking about. And I, I think silver is. If I, there's three underpriced assets in the world, oil, water, and silver. Clean water obviously is underpriced. It's free. <laughs> How can it be free? Um, oil is, you know, that much gasoline in the back of, uh, in a, if I had a, uh, an, uh, you know, one of those things that OJ Simpson drove, the Bronco, I could take five of you in my Bronco on that much gasoline, I could make it to Capitol Hill. And that costs 20 cents. There's nothing in the world there's nothing in the world that could get five adults to Capitol Hill for 20 cents quickly and safely. Nothing, nothing. So oil is mispriced. But the other one is silver. Silver is mispriced. So anyway, that's my answer on silver. I'll see... Uh, we can go to we can go to four o'clock and then I gotta walk my dog. I've got to take a shower and get to a meeting. But for we can go we can go to four o'clock. We can do that. Um I Gene, uh, I, I'm not going to read that out, but I do suggest that if we followed the science, the answer would be clear. I'll say that. Well, that's true, but it, but Travis, there's also the BRICS do not have a Federal Reserve Bank. They don't have a central government issuing bonds. They don't have a treasury. Look at the euro. Look at the eurozone. Um, the only currency worldwide that has a treasury has trust. It still has trust. And but although we're doing everything we can under this president to absolutely destroy our standing in the world, this man is stuck in a Cold War mentality. I'm probably stuck in some mentality that shouldn't exist anymore. It's you, the younger people, that have to create the new relationships in the world. And there's no reason you should be finding enemies in Moscow. Just no reason. You should go buy a condo in Moscow. Go live there. There's no reason you should have any enemies in China. None. None. There's no reason to have an enemy in Israel. No reason to have an Arab enemy. There's no reason to have an enemy in Mexico. This, this Cold War construct has to go away. 
and I'm counting on your generations to do it. But our, our military power sometimes, I think now, backs up our banksters, and we've got to change that. Anyway, I think uh, there is demand for the dollar. I think there is demand for the Federal Reserve to act as a pressure valve for the entire world. And so I think the international currency is and remains the dollar. So I, I, there are logical reasons for strengthen the dollar. And I think there, the, the stock market is going to go higher. I, I try to understand all these questions about liquidity. But in my city, every house that's listed sells in two days and the prices keep going up and it doesn't matter about interest rates. Every stock out there keeps going up except ours. I think there's plenty of liquidity and demand for dollars. So anyway. Oh, I wanted, I wanted uh, Mark to have Ham say hi to Celeste, but I'll say hi to cutie pie Celeste and give her a big kiss on the top of her head and tell her she's a cutie pie. But um, Ham hung up so quickly. I'm sure she'd rather hear from Ham, but um, Clinton will never shake me. I, I don't think people care about uh, Hillary Clinton has enormous power. Uh, women will vote for a hundred percent. Every every what do you call men that that simp's? I don't know. All the men that that um, go along with everything, they'll all vote for Hillary, and. Uh, um, Hillary will count the votes in the most honest election ever. She's not going to get caught short again. She won't start drinking early on uh, election day this time. But uh, uh, this Epstein stuff is a little odd, though. I, I don't know how that fallout's going to affect everything. <laughs> Companionship. <laughs> yeah, what is what is the love got to do with it? Do with it, do with it. What's love got to do with it? It's just secondhand emotion. Well, this is an old book, Mark. This is uh written well it's not that old 2021 but what's great about this book and i'm gonna read it again and then you know do do some videos on it is in the back he gives you some ideas on what to buy and i think it's still relevant i think it's still relevant He's a bit of a uh, kook in the sense that he's really smart and he's got all this energy and it's contagious. But I, I, I trust his judgment. I really do. He's a smart man and I think he's a good man. Um, yeah, kid, I think that's right about Finger. Um, you know... I'm hesitant because of the power the criminals show, but I think Benchmark is a $5 stock. It's probably, a, a, sorry, sorry, finger, $5, six, $7 stock. If the earnings are positive in the Benchmark report, the two analysts said that they will re-rate what they mean is give a higher target than $5. So I, I totally believe that there's going to be good news, ongoing good news, momentum on finger, and maybe a squeeze 
will be delayed. I don't know. But I think on fundamentals, it's a five, six, seven, eight dollar stock all day long. And then it could go higher. Maybe it gets to 20, 25, 30. That would feel good. That would feel good. So that's how I see finger. Well, Julie, um, that could be right, 13 to 1. I understand in the ground, silver is 9 to 1, 9 to 1. I don't know which one's right. It, you could be right at 13 to 1. Uh, it all depends on perception and demand. Um Gold is a good investment. I don't know that you need to be all in silver, but I just think that ratio, I wish I had bought a lot of silver at 120 to one, but I got caught up in this stuff. Uh, but the ratio to me says silver, 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 silver. I think earnings are this Friday. I think there'll be some news other than earnings this week on finger and i think it will be i think it will be positive um i have to sign for i have to sign for to get it who is really struggling i've never been out of the uk you've never been out of the uk God bless you, America. Gene, you don't have to give any money to anybody. But um, 50 quid is a lot of money in the UK. Um, yeah, God bless America. I think, America, I don't know, right now we're fighting with ourselves. As soon as we realize... I mean, our our differences are so narrow, and um, we can pull it all. We can pull it together. There it is, Celeste. Say hi to Celeste. Say hi to Celeste. Um, yeah, Jordan, I like that. They are fighting, and the the other thing is. Um, here we go. Kit Kitteridge, Kit Kit Carew. He's got it. That that about sums it up. We're at 87 to 1. His rec he believes it should be 19 to 1. If we just used if we just used gold at 2000. Silver's 100. That's where I think it's headed. Um, I was listening to Jimmy Rogers the other day, and he pointed out, I don't know, a month ago, that gold is making new highs. Well, I guess that's true. I don't know where the price is now. But silver is, is 40, 50, 60% off of its highs. So there's reasons to buy silver now. So Kit Kitteridge, thank you. Uh, what's this? I guess I'm wondering if you haven't had to buy physical tin. <laughs> buy spam. Buy a lot of spam, 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 spam. Hey, CB, thank you for putting up Kristen's story. I'm not going to highlight it because she seemed to want to keep it private. But I'd love to hear her story sometime. Um, oh, Jean, you're so kind. You're so kind. We will scrimp. And save grandchildren on your knee, Vera, Mike, and Dave. Na, 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 na. 
Vera. All right, let me see at the end. We've got four minutes. I'll go through the prices and then we'll kind of hang up. Yeah, Gene, I'm sorry you lost your little buddy. Last night, my dog slept on top of me and I was worried that he's doing that because he knows he's going to die. I don't know. But if he dies, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a mess. I'm going to be a mess. Absolute mess. I won't be able to sleep at night. I won't want to stay here. So I'm sorry you went through that. I don't know if we'll get energy independent. I think it's a canard, but we'll have to change how we live and we can do it and it'll still be a great life. Nick, Jeff, I sent an email to Wasserman. Yeah, I don't have much respect for her, but she had, I think she had breast cancer and, uh, uh, She's pretty powerful. I went by her office when I walked the hall. She's a powerful person. So that's great that you sent it. Oh, thank you, SR7531. <laughs> Celeste. Oh, I, I saw that one already. I'm not going to read it because it's, it's what, you know, I, I can't. Not allowed to touch the subject. I know he does that, but and he didn't want me to move. But anyways, great. Yeah, Persia. Why? There's no reason to be at war. War. Let's jaw jaw. That's what. Churchill said, it's better to jaw jaw than war war. Of course, he was a war guy. Oh, you're 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 sweet, Gene Davies. But I noticed in your flat there's a penguin on the telly. How did a penguin get on the telly? How should I know? I'm not Jacob effing Bronofsky. Uh, that's great. From Celeste. Love, happiness, peace, health, and wealth to all. Well, she needs a big hug and a ride around the, the neighborhood on the top of your shoulders. <laughs> um, Willie Nelson is in Scotland he might be getting to the end um, um, uh, he might be getting to the end of his time I I love Willie Nelson I'm crazy, crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy for feeling so blue. Worry, why? Should I let myself worry? Wondering what in the world did I do? Crazy for trying. And crazy for crying. I'm crazy for love in you.
When you went away, I cried, cried for so long. All right, I guess that's it. Let's just... Um, Let's just, um, I'll, I'll show Jean something, might help her. Maybe it's already here. No, I don't think it's already here. When you went away, I cried, cried for so long. I just can't find another man to take your place. You know you cheated. I can't get the words, but it's Linda Ronstadt. She sang crazy too. And that was the song after crazy. That's why I'm singing it. Isn't it amazing how your brain can remember an album from all those years ago? She also sang the song, Well, I drove past your house last night and I looked in your window. Lately, I ain't been feeling right and I don't know the cure, Lord. But I can't keep from wondering if I still figure in your life. Won't, <laughs> that's so bad. Won't you take me back and try me again? One of her best songs, Try Me Again. Absolutely best song, Try Me Again. Um, you say that I cheated, that I was not what you needed, but you're not being kind. You know you lied, you know you tried. And oh, try me again. All right, I'm going to show Jean Davies something if I can find it. And then I'm going to read out the stock prices. And then I'm going to go walk lucky boy, count my blessings, even though I'm a pitiful uh, creature who complains all the time. Well, I drove past your house last night. Sorry, it's taking a long time. Looked in your window. Lately, I ain't been feeling right. And I don't know the cure, Lord. But I can't keep from wondering if I still figure in your life. Won't you take me back 
and try me again. All right, so I'm going to go through the prices of what we have. And then I'll share something for Gene. And then I'm going to sign off. I'm going to sign off. Um, um, Logic closed at five and a quarter, which I think is disappointing, but that's a great buying price to me. Um, MULN closed at 14.33. CAUD closed at 133. Uh, I also think that's a good buying price. GTII closed at 25.99. Are you out of your mind? On 2.67 million shares. That might be your, what's the word? Cat, capitulation, capitulation. That might be the capitulation that you're looking for. And then it rallies back. Who knows? GDC, 261, 255, 267. SVM has made the list, 239. CLNV, four cents. And uh, let's look at HNRA. One eighty seven, and that's cheap. HNRC, Uh, point zero three six and what else? Let's look at vocal for the vocal of it. Point zero zero four four with the bid of point zero zero four. It's not pretty. All right, I'm going to show Gene Davies something. If it's here, if it's here, if it's here. All right, I'm going to cancel. And I'm going to try again because my computer is so slow. All right, we have to wait. We have to wait a second, and then uh, uh, what else? I've run out of run out of ideas to talk about. All right, let's see if it's here, Gene, to show you. Uh, there it is. This is for Gene. I have to go back to comments. I have to remove Gene first. Then I have to go back here. And then this is for you, Gene. And for everybody. This is for everybody that lost a dog this past year. That's what I think. Don't you? That must be exactly what it looks like. That must be that that must be exactly what it looks like. Um, all right, let me take that off so we can finish. We can finish. All right, Lucky, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Everybody loves you. They don't know that you stink. 
They don't know that you sleep all day. They don't know all you care about are treats. All right, let's go with this gentleman. Go live in a convalescent home. Okay. Do you have one in mind? I look so creepy and old. Thank you, Telly. You know, the one thing about getting older, it'll happen to you if you live this long. But I really appreciate it, Telly. Um, luckily, no one has to see me in person. Finger can get there. It definitely can get there. Um, all right. Um, Schwab says all shares labeled NextBridge in your account aren't actually NextBridge shares unless you made arrangements to... Wow, that's good information. So you you got to follow through on that. I my bias is towards owning an oil and gas company, and I'm impressed with the asset and with the team. But I could be wrong. But anyway, there's someone on Weibo saying uh, Ham's re real name, and and he's getting paid from GTII and Finger. Um. You'd have to ask Ham his real name, and you'd have to ask if he's getting paid. Um, uh, I think I know that people like Frank Benedetto, um, uh, and others get paid um, from companies. Um, he puts it on. He put. He he discloses it. It's perfectly normal. He's an IR guy, and um, I, I frankly, Ryan, I'm going to try to get paid from companies this year. I can't keep doing this. I didn't. I never expected this to take two years. On the other hand, I don't like to leave a job undone. Uh, but if I could get paid by companies to tell their story, to interact with you, uh, whether it's cash, stock, or both, or warrants, I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, I have to find out a way to disclose that because uh, every idea I've shared came has come as my own idea. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't uh, gladly be a more professional setup where I could get expenses paid maybe or get shares or get uh, uh, some cash and then have a team, you know, get that for me and a team of people working. I'll do that. It's a normal on Wall Street. People do get paid to talk about stocks. Um, uh, I would think if someone is trying to discredit him, that it means that we're getting close to really massive pressure. My guess is that Jeff Easton, who put out the strangest press release, and then he had uh, 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 Jeremy Frommer put out a strange release. What company puts out a release? Hey, we've entered into negotiations. Most lawyers would tell you, don't put that out. Don't put that out, at least in my experience. Wait till you have the deal done. But maybe Jeff is behind it. I, I would guess, Ryan, it means there's real pressure 
on uh, the position and finger. That's what my guess would be. Um, but I don't know who is saying that he's getting paid. Uh, I don't know why they would know. What's their motive? But ask that person, are they getting paid? Do they have a kickback from... Uh, do they have a kickback from the hedge funds or from Jeff Easton or from uh, Kramer? Ask how they're getting paid. They're looting. They're on the side of the looters. How are they getting paid? How are they making their money? I can't imagine that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Um, uh, it would not surprise me if everybody that is pitching stocks and talking about stocks with you are getting paid in some fashion. And uh, I, I, like I say, I intend to get paid on some, by some of these companies. I don't know if they'll do it, but I'd like it. I would like it myself. I don't lose my stock decreases. All right, it's 4.17. I'm going to end very quickly. Um, yeah, I think it, it might. I'll have to look at the chart. But back when markets were real, that's what you were looking for. That high volume day hits a new low, snaps back, and it could be over more than one day. And then, boom, you're, all, you're back to the races. So I would look for that. Uh, um, Rondell, I didn't. I don't know your question. Uh, Wolf is two hundred four. Yep. Yeah. CAUD one thirty two. CAUD could have a snapback. I mean, I wish they hadn't done that financing with Aubrey Spack. But when you look at when I look at, for example, the Spac that is HNRA, all of these criminals do it, all of them. And, and I'm not saying that CAUD is criminals. It's the people that financed them. Uh, I think, though, they CAUD has a great team, and they'll get it back. They'll get it back. I, I think Boeing uh, needs to ground the MAX plane, the 7379 plane. They cut corners, and they should start from scratch. That's my opinion. Um, Logic and GoLogic have been plummeting. I hardly say it's plummeting, but let's just visit that. Plummeting, really? Ooh, ooh, a plummet. Let's just see what you call plummeting. Logic um, is trading at 525, so that's up from when I um, started really pushing it last year. It was around two and a half cents. It even got under two cents. I'd hardly call that plummeting. Look, uh, CB, there are a lot of shorts in Logic, and it either either accept the fact that it's for sale. It's a shell. It has nothing. Now there's some risk that they'll go into business, stay in business, and I can't address that risk right now because if that happens, we'll have to talk about that then. But if they just sell the shell to a private company. Worth six hundred million, seven hundred million, eight hundred million dollars, with commensurate revenues and cash flows and value, and and institutional investors. That buyer is just going to buy the shell, which means they buy all the shares that are in it. And it doesn't matter if the criminals short it or not. They're just going to buy it. I just did the calculation. I'm not going to go back through it. 
I think the value to UCB, if you even own Logic, is going to be 50 to 60 cents a share. Of, let's say, a New York Stock Exchange trading stock that the criminals can't do anything with. So, if it's down, I would buy more. Let me just look at Go Logic. Uh, 35 cents. I can't see the bid and ask. Plummeting. 500 shares have sold. Oh my God, it's a plummet. 500 shares. Um, I don't, to me, it closed to 35 cents. My memory of the bid and ask yesterday was 27 cents to 55 cents. Bid and ask. So I don't see a plummet. I don't see a plummet there. So, I, you know, it's all in your wording. Uh, Go Logic, very thinly traded. You're going to have the identical thing happen with Go Logic that happened with Logic. If I had to guess, CB, you should be buying Go Logic. But I don't think it's going to happen right away. I think Go Logic will be 10x, 20x, 30x from here. But anyway, you can call it plummeting. Oh my God, it's plummeting. I would, I would just say that if we want to take rigged markets and win, we're going to have to buy when stocks are plummeting. We're going to have to buy when it feels like shit. But if we know the story, maybe we get a reward. And as it's going up, we're not going to have diamond hands. We're not going to have diamond hands. We're going to take some of the money off the table. And this year, I hope, as we make profits, I hope we take 5, 10, 15% of those profits. And if we don't own it already, we start with silver. Maybe we can add in some income producing oil and gas stocks. And then we can start solidifying our financial uh, picture. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I don't know. I lose my cool. I am sensitive. My my stepmother used to say that to me when I would pout or I'd get upset. But it was complicated. She was my stepmother. And, uh, you know, things were, I don't know, she'd say, sensitivity. <laughs> I haven't done my stream in the morning. But... I hope my dog lives for two more years. But if my dog were to die, I think I'd move to London. I think I would, at least first. Um, and then I, my streams would be early in the morning. But I don't know. I don't, that's just a thought. Yeah, it's too bad. I... I hate that people are bullies and they, they're cowards when they support. People who support Jeff Easton and Philip Vallier and their clients, the hedge funds behind that do the shorting and, and the Kramers, they're just cowards. All right. Do I think AQST... I have no idea, Lamar. AQST, I have no idea. FDA approval. Um, FDA approval is a mixed bag. If you've signed a criminal note, it's not going to be a rescue. If you go after you get approval, you need funding and you go to a criminal to get a note, it's not going to help. But it's always better than nothing. Yeah, I'm still holding it. C-A-U-D, I'm still holding it. Um, I'm going to try to buy more if my my two main uh, trading plays are um, Logic and HNRC. Excuse me for that, HNRC. Um, if HNRC get announces the dividends, though, that I think they're going to announce, I may not trade out of HNRC. I may just hold it. 
because I think HNRC could be a dramatic uh, mover over a year's time. But there's some risks in it. I don't understand why it's trading down here when it's NAV is uh, $2.32. I don't understand it. So I might be missing something. But my HNRC, if I were to buy right now an additional stock, I think it would be HNRA. And uh, But Mark, I want to take profits and buy CAUD. That's what I want to do. And I want to buy uh, I want to buy some of these other stocks we've talked about. I'm just too tired to remember everything. Bitcoin ETF just got approved. So Soldado, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, when I was young, and I thought things I did mattered. Um, when I was young, if if the news gets approved, you sell. So my gut instinct would be tomorrow, if Bitcoin goes up, it would be an opportunity to at least sell some of it because I think it'll it'll trade back. But I don't know that the markets trade the way it used to be. But if you sell some, when it pulls back, you can buy it back and you feel like you feel good. Hey, I took a profit. I bought it back cheaper. I own more. But I would look for the news to be something if it op if it trades up tomorrow to uh, sell into. On the other hand, maybe maybe it it's it's going to just shake, rattle, rock and roll right away. But anyway, I'm just telling you what how things used to trade. I'm sure I look old and and uh, old and worn out. I was noticing the other day when I did a video, I look just like my dad. My dad. <laughs> to me, I just look like my dad. <laughs> when I when I when I walk around, I think I'm still 25 years old, but I realize I'm just an old man, old chunk of coal as. Uh, Norm MacDonald said, quoting Billy Joe Shaver, I'm just an old chunk of coal. I'm not. As, as Winston Churchill said when he would go into the Mediterranean buck naked because he always bathed, walked around the house, swam naked, and a whole gathering of press and, and glitterati ga gathered around. He said, I don't know what they're looking at. He said, I'm not a bathing beauty. But I, and I know that. I'm no beauty. All right, Michelle, thank you. Is this guy still pumping GTI on finger? Uh, T-Dog, I'm, I'm most decidedly not pumping GTII. I've been very careful in what I say with GTI. Um, I I I think I admire your cowardness and that you're making money with the shorts and that you're you support from the sideline the criminality in this uh, in these marketplaces. I think GTII is in a difficult spot. Um, frankly, I think the CEO, the current CEO, would have been better served to remain in the corner. But I think he's decided to be active, and I don't think it's been productive. Um, T Dog, I've been very clear that there's a school of thought there's no short position in GTII, or if there is, it's very small. I don't happen to agree with that because I've never seen covering in GTII. I've never seen it. So T-Dog, your friends, the Kramers, I just think they gleefully destroyed the stock and kept selling. And I saw it. They started with 50 million that they sold against the note. 
which Reichman bought back. They called into Reichman to make a deal, and Reichman said no. They called they called people close to Reichman and said, hey, we want your stock. They said no. Um, this right now, T-Dog, your friends are winning right now because you're a scumbag coward. But that's all right. You have a right to say something, but I consider you, I consider you scum. Um, but I haven't been pumping GTII for quite a while. I don't know what you mean by pumping. I think you, T-Dog, you and your friends, the Kramers, the pumping happens when Kurt and Seth Kramer go, or, or the cold caller, their cold caller, Mayo, calls into GTII. That's the pumping job. As soon as Reichman says, all right, I'm interested, the dumping starts at the uh, bucket shop, which Cur uh, Mayo and the Kramers run out of Great Clam, New York. And now they, they, they've moved some of it right near to Joe Thiesman's uh, in Alexandria. That's the dumping. So thank you for your comment. But no, I haven't been pumping GTII. I haven't been pumping Finger for a while either. But I now think Finger's at a price that the risk reward could be really exciting for tomorrow if there's news and Friday if there's earnings. GTII, frankly, I'm not sure that, that your, you and your criminal friends couldn't get it lower over the next few days. GTI needs uh, clarity of action. It needs support of the whales. And uh, I think that could come sooner than you think. But I'm not ready. I don't know what you mean by pumping. I've never pumped either stock. So I take, I take exception to your, dev your word. You're basically accusing me of the criminality that you and your friends do to every stock. You pump it to the CEO in the form of a toxic convertible note, and then you dump and you never stop dumping. So I think you're the one who's behaving in a criminal way, not me. Mullen, uh, an investment of one million. Yeah, Mullen's terrible. And that's that's what people like T Dog's friends do to market caps. Mullen's a great company, great idea. But T Dog believes that T Dog and his Kramer and Easton friends deserve all of that market cap. And then they come on to poke fun, to be bullies. I think in 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 uh, Dante's places of hell circles of hell they have to add one lower I know well anyway I ain't no looker I ain't no looker I used to have something I think because um now when I walk into places no one looks. They used to. I used to I used to get a little bit of a, you know, I used to get something. I used to have something. I used to have something. Bullshit, T Dog. Bullshit. You know, you're here because you're a narcissist and you just want to brag. That the stock's down. Schadenfreude. I think I think you should go back to not watching in a while. Go go sell crazy somewhere else. We're all full up here. Well, that's great that you trade you transferred it. Eighty dollars is worth it. FedEx is back. You know, FedEx back and forth is more than that. So good for you. Good for you. I'm glad you transferred. 
T Dog, what do you do for a living, T Dog? Why do you have the balls to come on here and you don't know what GTII does? I've talked about it. You and your shorts know, but you don't care. All you care about a company is that it's trading, they need money, and they'll sign a toxic convertible note. That's all you need. And then you know you're going to be rich. And you're just part of a criminal activity. You think you're something special. You're not. You're not. You're replaceable as a cog in the wheel. The only thing that makes you special is you're dishonest, you're greedy, and you're willing to steal. It's the only thing. It's the only thing. That's great. That's what you have. If you, uh, Ralph, call uh, AST tomorrow. I, I got to get going, but call AST tomorrow. You'll be amazed. They ask for your name and maybe your, your social security number. And all of a sudden they read back to you. You have so many shares and boom, boom, boom. You don't need to have your certificates at AST. Although I do suggest, Ralph, I haven't gotten around to it. I do suggest while this is on the tip of everybody's tongue, you do transfer them to AST. So if you lose them, they're there. Um, if you want to transfer someday, they're there. But you don't have to. I don't think there's any rush. Uh, they have the record of them. So if you lost your certificate, you could get it again. I just think that's brilliant. I think you did the great thing. Well, why do you come on and say, is this guy still pumping? Why, why do you come on like that? And now you're trying to be polite? I don't buy it. I don't buy it. The criminals will do anything, Michelle. Um, Finger is at least a real company. GTII is a real company, T Dog. Go to their website. I'm not going to spend time uh, telling you what GTII does. But I'll tell you one thing GTII has very little burn rate. They have a CEO that won't deal, do a deal with the criminals like Jeremy Frommer will. And like the rest of your victims have. But you're right. Finger fundamentally has a tremendous story. Uh, GTII, they don't have much right now. But they have, if you believe it. That's the bet. That's the bet. Is there a large naked short position or not? I don't know. I've told you, T-Dog. I'm a hell of a pumper. I've told you there's a guy retired from the Amex that thinks it's all bullshit. There isn't a large short position because he thinks you and your friends, when you sell his stock that you haven't located, that doesn't exist, when you fraudulently sell stock without borrowing it and mismarking tickets, he believes you buy it back the same day. I don't. I think you sell it and sell it and sell it and sell it. But you know what? The SEC doesn't care. If the SEC was into real full disclosure as they require of CEOs and real companies, they would disclose real numbers. I think they do. The guy from the Amex says, no, they don't. Well, that's his, can't prove what he's saying. He can't prove it. It's his belief. And I believe him. He's honest and he's smart and he's diligent. I think you and your friends sell counterfeit shares all day long. And I think the reason you're here is to get people to sell GTII. That's why I think you're here. Three weeks. That's awesome, Ralph.
I'm not going to answer it. There's a website for GTII. I'll give you a short answer. They incubate companies. They're like a SPAC. They're like an incubator. They're a public company. They give stock to buy companies who want to go public. But it takes two years of audited financials usually. It takes filings. They help companies do that. So if they buy a company for 100 million shares, after let's say in two years, that company floats. The company gives back, let's say, 90 million shares. And, and GTI keeps 10%. But you, idiot, believe that every company doesn't do jack anyway. Doesn't matter what a company does. All that matters is they sign a toxic convertible note with that liar, Jeff Easton, and that piece of shit, Kurt Kramer. And then you start selling and you join in and you come in for FUD. And you keep selling and you keep selling and you're proud of yourself. Now. I can't mean I can't make it. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know what? T Dog, M U L N. I don't know if it's a great company. They took financing from you criminals and they did it again. But MULN is a company in the electric vehicle space. You're an asshole. How is a company going to be a great company when people like you are ticks and parasites on the company? You add no value to this planet. Zero value. You're a taker. What are you effing sell? You lying mother. I love that, Ralph. I'm going to go to the bottom. Um, I'm not going to be able to make it at six o'clock, so he can have a drink and I'll be there as soon as I can. Uh, I'm just a retail trader. Can't find the naked short button on my Schwab app. I don't believe you. I think you're a lying piece of shit. F the naysayers, that don't mean a ting. This is the style we bring. That sounds like uptown top ring king. Uptown top ring king. Town talk ranking. Uptown top ranking. Alicia, Alicia, and can't remember. Oh, wow. So they got more shares out. That debris, that's that bothers me that maybe he did a toxic financing. On the other hand, he is trying to um, uplist and he's making acquisitions. As one data point, I would I would consider that a red flag. But but out of context, it might not be. 
So if it's 241, the NAV would go down considerably, right? It would go down by a fifth. So maybe if it's accurate, it was 232. Maybe it's now $2. Um, I don't know what to say, Debright. I appreciate it. I, I'll uh, I'll look into that. Hopefully, he'll follow up with an explanation um, soon. That would reduce my dividend calculation considerably because he said fifteen cents a share. Now he didn't clearly state. He, well, he did kind of, but then he changed it. But if let's just assume he were going to make a 15 cent cash distribution, it would now be less per share. But I'm not sure he ever was going to be quite that high. And it would change the value of the HNRA distribution. So that's significant information that you just put there. But I still think in either case, the, the distributions are going to be worth more than four cents. Anyway, that's that's thank you very much for that. I do need a break. I do need a break. I'm going to go at the end of this. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to uh I'm sorry I got upset at times. I'm sorry sorry for being flappable. I'm going to go walk my dog and try to meet, make my meeting uh, for dinner on time. I'll do my best. Um, uh, oh, I'm supposed to look over here. <laughs> so anyway, peace, love, and happiness. Thank you, Busy, for all your help. Uh, uh, Phil, thank you very much. Um, uh, we'll try to have Kristen on live, maybe. She was great. Thanks to him. And... Uh, uh, We'll catch you on the flip side. I, I don't know. I have to, I guess he saw it on, uh, damn it, I got to finish here. OTC. I've got to sign off. Um, outstanding shares of HNRC on the over-the-counter market site is 241 million. And I admitted in my video, I did a calculation using the Yahoo numbers which were like 30 or 35 million, totally wrong. So it, it, you can't always trust these sites. That was a mistake of mine. I should have checked more than one site. But anyway, um, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Um, thank you very much, Rachel. That is a kindness I can't return, and I really appreciate it. Um, uh, thank you very much. So, um, uh, and Robert Kepke, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch you later. We'll uh, see you down the road.